It's Halloween, the night he came home, when the deepest fears are made real, when the darkest nightmares come true, when the most courageous soul cowers in the face of evil. First time on TV, the modern horror classic from John Carpenter, parental discretion advised. This film contains elements of shock and suspense, and now Halloween, you won't be watching it alone. Law of the Jungle. Eat or be eaten. These film cans tell what happened to the Americans who journeyed into the Amazon to shoot a documentary. New York City is only a day away from the green inferno of the Amazon jungle. Four Americans plunge into the savagery of the Amazon jungle to film a documentary. They never come back. Are they still alive? If so, where are they? This is the movie that Rex Reed called the most horrifying motion picture I have ever seen. This film is positively ruthless in its attempt to drive you right out of your mind. Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. From New Line Cinema, rated R. Okay, we're rolling. Happy Halloween. Happy close to Halloween. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. Cheers, it's, bro. Cheers. It's it's that time of the year. <laughs> pumpkin we spice cola. Some, we just carved some pumpkins. Yep. And that was amazing. I'm Noel Oldick. Welcome to Movie Goblins, the Halloween special. A long time coming. Only took like two years. <laughs> and basically what we were have like, usually we do three movies, right? So Yeah. This time, but this we're, time like, we're, we're not little we're, bitches. We're going to do four movies. And a questionnaire. Yeah, and a questionnaire. Yep. Thank you for reminding me, Ben, because... Uh, You're welcome. God knows, with trying to like trying to get this to record, that I... I <laughs> I wasn't gonna be able to remember. So so okay. So this is a questionnaire Noah found somewhere. Oh no, I, I made it up. Oh, oh like, you I, made I, it. I typed it up. Oh, I did, okay. And he's gonna ask me these questions. Mm-hmm. So I guess well, let, let's get started on these questions. Here. Okay. All right. So favorite horror movie. So we're we're just gonna do like a lightning round, basically. Got it. It's like we're gonna like I'm gonna do three, two, one. Got it. And as, like, and yeah. then I then you answer. Got it. Uh, cool. At the same time, then we discuss it. All right. So favorite horror movie. Three. Two, one. King's Speech. Chainsaw Massacre. So, yeah, let's talk about that. Why was, like, what's, uh, other than, like, how about you explain why King's Speech is, like, for you, a scary movie? First of all, it's not a horror film, Mm -hmm. even a little bit. It's scary in the sense that, because, you know, in in horror films, you're like, oh, no, they're in the middle of the woods with a moira. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen to me. That's scary. But for me, it's like, can you, as a person who stutters, can you go in front of a whole crowd and talk about Nazis? Yeah. I couldn't. But, but to, to truthfully answer, answer your question about what my favorite horror film is, either Black Christmas, the original, or Halloween 2018. Okay. Well, you... Re- really? No. Well, uh, I, I, I like... I, I don't know. I, best horror movie. Well, okay. Like, does horror film just count as any spooky... Like, well, that fits, like, within the archety- the, fits within the archetypes of what you... Like, of what a mm. movie... A horror movie... What a, a horror conventionally is. Like, does the classic black and white universals count? Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Oh. That's, like, one of the foundations. Um... In that case, like either like the, the original Frankenstein from 1931, Black Christmas, or um, yeah, those are fine for now. Okay, probably like on the drive home to Oshkosh, be like, oh shit, oh shit, I, I forgot one, I forgot fucking, oh never mind, that's my favorite. Hide the Living Dead. Right yeah, living Dead. Yep, I think that might be my favorite. My favorite is so my favorite is Texas Chainsaw Massacre because. I just consider it to be just one of those perfect movies, and I, I consider it to be perfect. It's the ultimate happy accident movie. It is because it was like made for no, no money. Made for no money. Uh, basically, the filmmakers going insane were going insane as they were making it, 
it, it, it encapsulates the true meaning of the word horror, right. you know, yeah. without being obnoxious or over the top about it, you know. Yeah, it's not like, hey, we're we're eating these people's like we're the whole like whole arm like it's just not. It's like no, it's just it's more disturbing than that. It's 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 yeah. a it's the the title lends itself to more like visceral horror, which it is. Yeah. But it's also on a psychological level, like what seeing this kind of stuff would do to a person's mind, you know. Right. So yeah, worst horror movie. Three, two, one. Human things. Centipede. Yeah. Okay. Well, because like, okay, I've never seen Human Centipede, but just mm. from what I know about it, I know I would hate it. It's mm -hmm. so like I, I, I don't even need to watch it. No I, substance, no style. It's just like, hey, it's gross. Get it? <laughs> yeah. And then like, like every sequel is like the sequels are weird because I because I was curious, so I read up the plots where it's like. The second one is a guy watching the movie, like the first movie, and getting inspired. And then the yeah. third movie is two guys watching the second movie and getting inspired by that. Yeah, it's it's just a clusterfuck. Yeah, it's, it's just, I don't. There's just like it's there's no point to it. I don't want to watch it. I don't. It's torture porn. Yeah, you know? it's like it's not my thing. Like th that's like for me, that's the ultimate. What I don't want horror to be. No, yeah, like, me too. Like like even the Saw films is torture porn, but it's funny torture porn where it's like yeah. But that just seems like just gross. For the sake of being disgusting and yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, no. So my my worst horror movie was is also one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Things, mm -hmm. um, Things is a movie that like it is so amateur that not even I like it. So. That's bad. And so and like I feel like things like Halloween. So it's hard for like. <laughs> <laughs> no, well no it's just like it's just like it's just so boring it's so lame it's just like what are we doing here you know so like it's just like the plot just the guy finds a bunch of things in a house in his dies. house and just sleeping napping and beer drinking ensues where there's like they're mildly concerned about it but in between dealing with the things they're just taking naps so sounds like the perfect Halloween party, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> both no like nothing about it's like it's like an anti movie basically. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds wonderfully terrible. Favorite horror franchise: three, two, one. Halloween. The classic Universal films. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I was gonna. Here's the thing. Because it crosses over, so it counts. Because no, 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 it counts. It counts. It counts. Yeah. Yeah, but what, what, like, what do you like so much about? Well, other than the obvious reasons, like, what do you? I like. I, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of horror films that are more spooky than like visceral. Like I like the spooky, yeah. like fun. the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. There's some great acting. Like mm. the guy who played the Invisible Man. Oh, Claude Rains. He's yeah. the fucking goat, man. I love. <laughs> Even the moon's frightened of me. Frightened to death. Like uh -huh. so many great monologues. Like in the first Frankenstein, where he's like, "Have you ever wanted to see what's beyond the stars?" Like he has that mm. whole like great monologue. Great monologues. But even the bad acting can be fun. Like, there's the classic, like, lady, like, oh! Yeah, and where she's like, oh, the monster! And faints. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that part can so be many. fun in a cheesy way. Not yeah, always. Exactly. Not always, but... Because, like, like in the, in, in the Invisible Man, his, his fiance was annoying. Like, okay. her acting was, like... Well, it wasn't just, like, oh! It was, like, just, oh, please, please, please come home. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, like, obviously... The, the whole sound acting was new, so everyone wasn't yeah, so everybody's trying to figure as it out. ready to go as, like... No. You know, the uh, the guy who played... Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Frankenstein. Uh, who yeah. played Frankenstein? In the, um... oh, oh, I mean... Oh, uh, Colin Clive? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. He was, yeah. Like, the, like, people who were in theater, who were, like, in Shakespearean theater, really know yeah, how to... They really, knew how to do it. How to be quiet. <laughs> they knew yeah, how to no, not, it, like, exactly. overact. You can tell a difference between people like who had it down in terms of acting the, the in the at the time, and people who, who were just it was, hot. It was like, there, was, yeah, exactly, it's exactly. Like the, the people on the poster were like grabbing each other, looking up at the giant monster head. Uh huh. Like that, I love that shit. Mm -hmm. Me too. I say like just for this pick, just to make it different, mm -hmm. Halloween because Let's go. it's such a fascinating. It is not a, for the movies themselves, but because it's such a fascinating clusterfuck. It's such a clusterfuck. Like they like. It's like oh, okay, make a sequel, and there's, like there's siblings. make the, make the th yeah. And then there's siblings. That was a yeah. terrible twist, and third then one, the third one masks. We'll talk that eat about. Kids. We'll, we'll talk about the third one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Halloween four continuing after Halloween two. It was fine. And Halloween five and six, and then it's like oh, reading. that was terrible. <laughs> Reset the yeah no the the the, the producers cut of Halloween six is magical. Has 
be pretty much the plot point is that Michael Myers impregnates his niece. Let's go. So <laughs> there's that. And then there's like, no, fuck it. Reset it to H2O. Ab- to reset it to the first two. So in Halloween two, two H2O. Halloween H two O is the technically the second third Halloween movie. No, no, it's it's the first third Halloween movie. Well, with Michael Myers. Yeah, no. So so Halloween H two O is a sequel to Halloween one and two. No, no, I know. That's why it's that's why it's the, the second Halloween three. <laughs> you said two though. The, sorry, I, sorry, I got my things mixed up. Second, How dare the, you, the sir? Second Halloween. Th- I I thought it was it was just some yeah whatever. Yeah. Halloween second, the second ha- the 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 second Halloween three. Yes. Then resurrection happens. Then you're like reboot it. It's a remake. Two Trick movies by Rob treat, Zombie. Motherfucker. <laughs> Buster rhymes. Um, and then they everyone like, loves Halloween films in summer. Yeah. No. At least <laughs> Halloween, least Halloween resurrection. August. Resurrection was came out like late July. Fucking bullshit. Look, guys, you had one job. You had one Literally job. Literally move it, it like four move months it, ahead. Move it into October. At least late September. At least late September, yeah. I remember the um, the Rob Zombie ones came out in August, which is like, that's bad, but like not as bad as July, you know? It's like a little, because it's starting to turn into fall, it's, but it's, it's still not bad. the same. It's not the same. And, and of course, we all know those are masterpieces. Oh, yeah, no, so. yeah. It's it's a it's a travesty. It's a travesty. And Michael then, Myers came but, from a redneck, trashy home. It's like his dad was beating him and shit. Uh-huh. Like, the, that's the, why he's evil. The Blumhouse trilogy, which is like I love 2018, and I stand by this. Mm-hmm. I think it's the most. I disagree, but you know we'll have that be that. But um, they, they, okay, both they have, it's not the worst Halloween. The too. one thing they do really well uh, in terms of, is in terms of resetting things is making it so that they're not brother and sister, and That's also just Michael's things. character of just honestly, no James character. Jude Courtney is a great Michael Myers. He's a great Michael. Well, the Myers. fact that every time he played Michael underneath the mask, he always had like proper like ma- like his damaged. Face. Yeah, no, yeah, I, he, I really he didn't need it. That. He didn't need it. No, He's just yeah. like, no, I need it because that's the character. Mm-hmm. And like, I do appreciate he had those the perfect like build. Things. He was the yeah. perfect build. He's he's not like very muscular, but he's just like a guy. And did you know he's the same age as Nick Castle? And he and, and Nick Castle played Michael in 2018 for the last time for like one yeah one shot for two yeah. scenes for two scenes. Yeah, there's a shot of him sitting in like and there's also a shot like him in the background walking around. That was yeah, Nick. okay, okay. But it's just cool. Like, hey, Nick Castle, want to just uh, put on the mask and just sit there for a little bit? <laughs> yeah, it's like okay. And then uh, I, I, 2018 is I, I I remember I watched it with my ma because mm-hmm. I was like oh I, I like Halloween you know like I, I had a fun experience except for that the motherfucker who listen I love popcorn but like oh like yeah and it's like the most like quiet intense like it's like dude, I'm gonna fucking knock your teeth out <laughs> remind me of uh, Alien Romulus where there's like. It starts out in the vacuum of space. So there's no sound, so you can hear everybody. Yeah, it's like opening their bags. And yeah, shit, and uh-huh. like, <sighs> guys. But yeah, no, it's this ironic sense of like, oh my god, they did not know what they were doing at all with this. With Nightmare on Elm Street, they found their footing after like this, the once the third one rolled around, they found yeah. their footing. Like Nightmare on Elm Street, they're, third they're one gonna, like has to make it less gay, more. <laughs> More Freddy. Well, no. The thing is, like, there's they found a formula. You know, yeah, yeah. By the by, the third one. There's a group of kids. All have their own different They're, paths. Insecurity and or die or a certain fear, way. And Freddy's gonna exploit it and toy, play with this food and that have that be that and be destroyed at the end. But and Friday the Thirteenth is just Jason's just gonna run around killing horny teenagers. Yeah, I mean, and it's pure trash. But Halloween is just like they they didn't know retro- what it they was. don't know what they're trying to do. They're trying to do a new thing each movie and like well, some it's a mixture of like samey stuff where it's like it's a Michael gets, kills people. Halloween four is basically a remake of the original. Yeah, but shitty. Um, Halloween five is like they introduced the Thorn cult thing with like the Man in Black and then the expanded palette and yeah. Halloween six. And it's a, just a fucking disaster How, to me. Like if they want to keep going, of course Halloween four has that great ending. The, yeah, Halloween Four is a great ending. Yeah, they should have just done more of that, or like she just becomes. The she new just Michael. becomes, but they need Michael Myers in the movie. Because remember last time in yeah. Halloween Three, they didn't, they didn't have Michael well, the Myers. Was, people well, didn't like it. Well, the thing with that is like there was no connection at all. Like yeah. at least with Jamie, she would have been the, like another in the Myers bloodline. I feel like I mean, it, the logic it, it been was stupid, but. the logic from the Mustafa Khan kind of point of view is like people would not go to see this movie if Michael Myers is not in it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's say, yeah, to me, the only Halloween movies that matter in terms of Michael Myers era is 
the original, the first two, and 18. Th- okay. To me, those are the only ones I really count. In, okay. In, in terms of the Michael era of shit. Yeah, the Michael stuff. Okay. Yeah, because because eight if if they just made 2018 and didn't make kills or ends, I think that would have been. They should have made that whole thing conclusive in one movie, but they needed they did, to stretch though. it out. They well, did. no, they didn't. But they, 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 they did not. I was just like they they didn't show the body. But to, to me, that that works because like it's the classic like. <laughs> but that's the, the first film where it's like that's been the problem though is that that's the excuse to make more movies. I know, but like to me, if if it was just him not being there. Because uh-huh. because the idea is that it's more the idea because like eighteen is more about trauma and mm-hmm. how it passed down to the generations like yeah. that's them destroying like like the house like the like that big bunker house and like inside the, the dollhouse is the classic Myers house where, yeah and, like so that's burning too where it's like that's it's like, it's, that's it's like, like I've never made the connection that's like Nightmare on Elm Street three where like she's like making the uh, the house the Freddy house oh yeah yeah but yeah I think eighteen is genuinely pretty great. And then okay. Kills was just grindhouse shit. Yeah, and then Ends I, I, was just I like, them like saying, fuck it. <laughs> I like Halloween 2018 less and less as I keep watching it. And I've only seen Kills once because I don't really have much of a desire to see it again. Even though I got it on Blu-ray out of my own volition. But well, I mean... I need to complete the trilogy. The, the, collect, the, the, whole tr- the whole series. And I have Halloween Ends on 4K. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, but what's the next question? Next question is most... Or like in um, in your opinion, mm-hmm. or like what you can think of, underrated horror film, just an, an underrated horror film you think more people should check out. Okay, I think okay. I got it. Okay, I got mine. Three, two, one. The nope. psychic. Okay. What? What? So explain psych. Nope. Without spoiling it. So uh, like the plot or like just just like just like what? what why what, I picked it? Why I picked it? Yeah. I I feel like it's not as talked about as as you know. Kid out or even us like like every time I talk to someone about it, I was like oh I haven't seen Nope yet it's like, mm. but like I think that's a jo- Jordan Peele's best horror movie mm. objectively like it's it's the most disturbing for me mm-hmm. I'm not gonna tell you why but there's some there's my own personal fears one of them is a fear of chimpanzees mm-hmm. that's exploited there's a great scene involved I'm like I can't talk I want it basically watch Nope because it's underrated. Mm-hmm. And people, it's also like a weird horror western thing, and that's mm-hmm. really unique. It's a very unique kind of. There's no other films like it. That's what I liked. It was like, like, Kid Out was very much kind of like, uh, like, who's coming to dinner kind of, uh, but yeah, like with the, like a the, twist, the, the horror twist, yeah. And like Us is very much was. I mean, Us was also very unique, but it was mm-hmm. it wasn't as good as Nope. Okay, Us was very like. From hindsight, I like. Us a little bit more than Get Out. Okay, I I think Us had better like filmmaking, like in terms yeah. of like shots, and, but like the story itself was very much like all over the place. Mm. And, but I think Nope is objectively his yeah. best film. As uh-huh. of now. But is it as good as Wendell and Wild? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I picked the Lucio Fulci's The Psychic. It, right. I, I I watched it this year on 4K, and I was just like. Okay, this is good. This is good. You know, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. And the last, like, it's good. It's like really good. Like, and it's mm-hmm. more of like, but it's not really like a horror. It's more of like a murder mystery type Say thing. A horror. Horror. Oh. <laughs> and um, but the last three minutes is like straight up pure, like just Poe esque horror. Like like Poe is in like gothic. Not well, situational in terms of the situation in okay. which the, the predicament. You know. Got it. Okay. And the, and okay. the story. Um. It's I I gave that shit a five because it was just so excellent. It's that it's okay. the um okay. the music from that was used in Kill Bill where she slices Buck's Achilles. It was like dun, 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 oh, dun, yeah. the seven notes in black. And he's yeah, Buck. Love yeah, I like the Buck. <laughs> that that line was from Eating the Lion by Toby Hooper. Is it? Robert England says my name's Buck. I'm rearing to fuck. <laughs> it's su- it's such a weird. I love. It's so like disturbingly funny because it's so stupid. But mm-hmm. that is like the the whole thing with the pussy wagon is my least favorite thing about Kill Bill Volume <laughs> One. It's just like I, Madonna I, used it in a music video. Oh, <laughs> and then and, and, and I think it's still parked on Tarantino's driveway. He's, I think it, I think yeah, he still owns the pussy wagon, which yeah. is. Okay, let's be honest. If I gave you the actual pussy wagon from Kill Bill, would That'd you? Be pretty, I would. Be, well, I, would I you would, drive I around would, and get get women in it? <laughs> no, hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Um, Climb aboard. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, now, an overrated horror movie. I could be spicy about this. Over, I could overrated. be. I could have a spicy take on this. I have maybe the spiciest take. Okay, you might kill me. Okay, I'm. I'm thinking. You, of, Brett will definitely skim me alive. Brett might do the same to me. Hold on. Sorry, I'm not Brett. by saying it's overrated. I'm not saying it's bad. No, at no, all. no. It the, might overrated. Even be great. That's like, overrated. Does not mean bad. No, yeah. Overrated They're, just means I don't think. I think there's movies that are more deserving of the love. So before okay. we, we're gonna say that we don't. We we will think the films we've chosen are good. They're just a little overhyped. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Most over, not most, but overrated horror movies. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. The Psycho. Thing. Oh, okay. You go first. <laughs> so I finally watched John Carpenter's The Thing. I think in, in September because I've had the Blu-ray forever. It's just always been. Uh huh. And I was like, I watched. I was like, it was good. It was fine. Okay. It looked nice. Well, I think partly it's like for for people in my, in our sphere of mm-hmm. movie shit, it's like all like the famous scenes are so famous where it's like mm-hmm. there's no I, I was not surprised once. Where it's like, gee, so, I, this guy's sh- shocking his chest. I wonder if his chest is going to turn into a big mouth. Uh, where it's like, like I knew, and also mm-hmm. like all the effects were not gross to me because mm-hmm. I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah, where it's like so like obviously I think partly it's just it's so well known. That it, it didn't affect. It's also, more cool to you. Yes, that's exactly like in terms of a horror film. I, I wasn't like, oh my god, how are they going? to... Also, uh, the main performance is like he's too cool. Like, uh, are, like, like he don't be disencouraged no, in that movie. Did, again, I, I, as a horror, like if he was like, if he's like literally like scared shitless, like genuinely like terrified, mm-hmm. but he's just like. People don't trust nobody around here. I'm the cool guy. Uh-huh. I'm fucking Kurt Russell and shit. It's like if you if, if, if people were more like shitting themselves, but like everyone was just for the most part really just like, what the fuck? That's weird. It wasn't like, oh my god, there's a fucking demonic thing from space fucking killing us. Well, I mean, if like they kind of crumbled, that the, there wouldn't be a forward progression or a reason to. Like, I know, but like, them. well, at least at least some characters I feel like should have like buckled, well, I mean, like just started. A few do. Well, I, but I mean, like, like crawling up in a fetal position and crying, like. Well, that, what about I, mean, uh, I what, would, about, what, what was it? It was um, Windows. Windows does that a little bit. When, uh, was he the guy? He was the guy. Who was like, he could be one of those things. Yeah, but I, but I mean, like, genuinely, like, just shutting down, like, just like crying. Well, then, then, then their character has no purpose, you know. Well, it, it shows that just yeah, because like, because if there's a super cool macho character who just breaks down, that shows just how bad. Again, I'm just saying, for me, like, I, yeah. I, like the whole paranoia thing, I was also confused on the thing's powers. Cause like, That's kind of the point, yeah. Well, well, like, okay, so if someone's a thing, do uh-huh. they know they're the thing? Or that's, is it, that's kind of up in the air. I know. Well, to me, that was always kind of like, because like, cause if they're trying to deceive Kurt Russell, uh-huh. that's scarier than if they genuinely don't know. Yeah. Because it's like, it's more paranoid. Because you're thinking about, like, the guy who's chest bursts open. Yeah, I don't think he knows he's the well, thing. Well, I mean, until he was passed out. I think it. I think it comes to a certain point where the whole thing just infects. I think the thing infected him from like the inside out. Yeah, well, like it planted But also the scene with the with the classic blood testing the blood. Yeah, where it's like that. Like he definitely like I, Norris. I think is his name. Yeah, um, well, definitely me, knew he was like, the thing. Yeah, I didn't feel like the paranoia horror of it personally. It's still awesome. Like yeah. it's still just a genuinely fucking well-made, awesome movie. But for me, as a horror film, I feel like I was kind of okay. Yeah, okay. I I, I I'm watched so sorry, it. Brett. Don't kill me. <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> apologize. Don't apologize to Brett. Apologize on behalf of the entire horror community. I'm sorry, Johnny <laughs> boy. Please, Johnny Carpenter. Please. Um, for me, it was the exact opposite experience. Where I didn't even know the film was like an effects movie. I didn't oh, know. Really? I didn't know. Um, so it was, all came as a shock to me. Okay. Shock in the senses, so. Well, to me, like, like my dad loves the thing, which is uh-huh. shocking because my, my dad's not a huge horror guy, but I remember him like, oh, I love the thing. I was like, okay. <laughs> so for me, Psycho, I still. You like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I feel like there's just better Hitchcock movies out there, you know? I've only seen Psycho. It's the only Hitchcock film I've ever seen. I would recommend uh, North I mean, by North Vertigo. West, Vertigo. Like, there's all the Rear, classics. Rear Window is his best movie. Oh, wait, no, opinion. okay. I've seen Psycho and uh, Window. Okay. Rear, Rear Window, it was good. I enjoyed it. Okay, all right. To me, like, the problem was that it's pretty clear that he did it. Like, the, well, the no, whole that's, mystery. That's the, I mean, it's, like, it's not really a mystery, it's just trying to figure out, like, just trying to like expose it, you know. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. 
yeah, but so I, I've, seen, I've seen Psycho and and uh, Window. Okay. So Psycho was just one of those things where it's like it has a great like first third, mm-hmm. and it just drags its feet for a little bit in like the uh, the middle part where it's like okay now we're following like these less interesting characters they're like it kind of takes like a downward not a spiral but like a downward turn, Curve. where it it just is not nearly as interesting. Okay, and then that's really all there is to it, and then it becomes interesting. It's it's saved by the but there's by the ending the twist. But then there's the whole thing where it's like, oh, I'm a, exp- yeah. I'm a doctor well, man. I'm going to explain just, how... It was in the 60s that people know. Yeah. All right. People who wear women's clothing are not murderers. Yeah. That's calm. But, all, I mean, to me the whole film is great just from just from Hopkins. Oh, Perkins. Uh, Perkins. I don't know why Brett made the same mistake. He was like, he called he called Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, but like, like, Perkins. Uh, like, actually, it's Perkins. Bates' whole performance for me is, is the heart of the film. It like, is, yeah. We're like... Where like all the new characters, it's not so much that they're interesting; is that how they interact with Norman for me is mm. interesting. Yeah, and I just also the book is. Have you read the book? I've not read the book. I have his book upstairs. It's yeah. actually very short. It's actually it's very short. Yeah, it's much more disturbing than the movie. Yeah, I've heard that. Because he's a big fat incel. <laughs> he chops her head off in the shower. He just yeah, I need I need to get around to reading it. It's it's. I'll, I'll like I'll like dedicate. It's like a day reading thing. I'll I'll dedicate it whole Octo- a day in October, one of the last days, to reading it. It's it's really short, but also like really well done. Okay, fair. I will crack it open soon enough. Read more books, kids. Re- seriously, that's coming from me. <laughs> okay, so number this is the last thing. Okay, it's a simple question, but it favorite leads- final girl. Actually, let's do that. Well, we can do both questions. We can do both of them. Okay, okay, let's question. do the first one. Okay. Okay, running zombies or Romero zombies? I mean, there's so few examples of running zombies I can think of. There's uh-huh. like, the, well, there's, there's like, remake of Dawn of the Dead. There's, if you want to like count like people who are like infected people, you know? Oh, okay. Like Rabid. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Twenty eight days later. Yeah. But there's also the running zombies in Return of the Living Dead because they run in that movie. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Okay. And they okay. chase after the car and stuff, and they like just just absolutely like dog pile like whoever shows up at the right. place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Send more cops. Send more. In terms of, it really matter. It's really depends on like the situation. Yeah. It works for Romero. It's it's really like I can't even like in terms. Let's just say in terms of what's scarier, running zombies okay. for me. Okay. Like. Yeah, I, I in terms of scarier, definitely running zombies because they're running and I can't run no good. <laughs> I mean, be, I, I can I can give be good, you know. <laughs> I mean, turn the track team, man. You can outrun. Oh, run please, zombies. it's cross cut. No, I'm kidding. I <laughs> shut up. It's both things. It's the it's, same it's, shit. It's, you're it's, running it's in a, a circle. You're run- oh man, it's more cross country than that. Mm. You run on grass. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Please you run on a course that takes a bunch of different turns. There was like color coordinated flags too. So That's so cute. Where like you had to make sure like I think uh, red is right and yellow is left. I think. Okay. Yeah, and blue is like straight ahead. Right. Um. Final girl. Favorite final girl. This One, is. Two. Oh no, no! Hold on, I gotta oh. think of mine. Um. Shit. Oh, okay, I think I got it. Now I want to make a I want to make a small suggestion. Okay. They don't necessarily have to survive to the end of the film. They 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 fit the, if they, they have to be the last the archetype one. they have to be the last one hence final girl yeah yes they don't have to live okay okay I got mm. I got mine okay one two three Sydney Laurie Prescott. Strode oh okay I'll, let's let's hear cla- about Laurie Strode yeah she's just great yeah no she's she just object like cause I, I you know the great thing about how the first Halloween compared to like Friday the Thirteenth is that yeah. all the teenagers had like character yeah they were people it's, mm-hmm. and laurie strode was just like and people always like oh the one who doesn't have sex survives and that's not necess- i mean john carpenter is not someone i would consider someone who is like anti-sex mm-hmm. i mean have you seen the man he looks like the ultimate hippie yeah so I, because he said the reason that was put in is because you know if you're banging you're probably distracted you're probably yeah. not looking around like oh uh-huh oh <laughs> It's like you're you're busy, you know. It's not the the moral Coming. of that was not don't. It was not. It was ultimately transmogrified into this yeah, whole like, into sub, like subtext of like oh don't 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 drink or do drugs or have sex, kids. But like the thing is, John Carpenter. Can John Carpenter's fuck. message, whether intentional or not, was like that he had that he observed upon like rewatching it was not 
don't do these things because they're bad or else you get killed. It's just be, be aware of your surroundings, you know, yeah. be wary, you know, right. there's evil stuff out there. That's all it is. Yeah. And like, and like, and of course the whole point, like, I don't, the first Halloween, the reason I like it is not because of the killings. It's more just like the suspense, like yeah. her, you know, the classic, her banging on the door, like, let me in. And uh-huh. just Michael just slowly walking. Uh huh. That part's what's great. Not not so much the actual like, like the whole thing of him holding him up and stabbing him. Like, yeah, no, that that's it's cool, but it's like, <laughs> it's not scary. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just kind of cool. But like yeah, to no, me, yeah. like, there's nothing scarier than like, there's just doom coming mm-hmm. toward you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it's like it, that's that's like, more terrifying. He's impending. Do- yeah, exactly. He's the impending doom of of the characters, you know. And of course, there's the classic scene of like his mask is slowly coming from the darkness. Like that shit. Oh like, yeah, where they beam the light, like yeah. they slowly shine the light on him. Yeah. yeah, that part that's more scary than just like. Uh, it, like he's wearing the the ghost costume, and he's like, <laughs> "Can I, can I get your ghost, Bob?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Laurie Shore is great just because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's she's just so practical and cool. Yeah, have you seen her in twenty eighteen? <laughs> she's oh she she look she's she's good looking in that. Well, she's oh she's I mean it's like <laughs> especially good looking in that one. So yeah, what eighteen? In twenty eighteen. Oh yeah. No 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 no. no, no. Oh sorry for. <laughs> H2O, H2O. Sorry. I mean, in H2O, she's... She, oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, why, why'd you pick uh, your final girl? Uh, Sydney Prescott is basically it, the... It, po- it, scream. Oh, okay. She is the postmodern look at the final girl because she's she aware... She kills the bad guys. Yeah, no, and she is aware... And these characters are aware of the tropes that mm-hmm. they fall, find themselves into, falling into. They're in a horror movie situation, you know? And I feel like she's able, Nev Campbell in her performance is able to mix that level of fear but competence. Yes. You know, she's scared, but she still she can hold her own, you know. Right, right. I, I feel like she carries that through every screen movie she's been in, you know. I really okay. appreciate that. I've only seen the first one. The first one. <laughs> The sec- the se- neither none of the sequels live up to the first one, but the second one is pretty good. It's okay. it's okay. okay. Screen four is fine too. It looks like garbage though. Like visually, it <laughs> okay. just looks like trash. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. A, so that's our questionnaire. Yeah. All right. With that out of the way, um, we the first film we watched was The Changeling, oh. Peter Medic's a uh, classic ghost tale spooky scary starring Jordan C Scott one of my favorite actors mm-hmm. he was in Doctor Strange Love and The Exorcist 3 um the best exorcism <laughs> it's 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 it, it, it's the best sequel way, for sure in, yeah it definitely <laughs> it's one of the, it's one of the best horror sequels ever made it's mm-hmm. one of the best it's one of my favorite horror movies um but no uh, upon like just trying to figure out what I wanted to like watch for this because uh, there were so many picks you yeah. know I, like ideas or big genre of horror big okay. genre that horror those horror movies slash spooky movies yeah um i i picked the changeling because it is a textbook ghost story yep it, 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 it horror does not really ample ap, um does not really aptly describe it, it horror i don't know it's pretty scary to me no, no it's it's spooky obviously but like there's more, there's more, so many times where i just said nope nope yeah, nope no. but more like it's not like I should say. It's not specific enough. Okay. Well, to call it a horror movie, it's a ghost story. Mm. You know, it's a it's a haunted house flick. Okay. Um, and so pretty much the mean potatoes of it is George C. E. Scott's character John Russell. Uh, recent the the film opens with this. It opens with a uh, uh, a scene where he's in upstate New York with his family in in winter time. And their car breaks down, and through a car accident, they both his his wife and his daughter they both die, and he is forced from in, like he is forced locked inside, accidentally locked inside a phone booth, uh, mm-hmm. to watch it all yeah. happen. And the trauma that sets in is pretty much uh, the, the 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 crux for the whole reason that he's trying to uncover what's happening in the house he moves into yep. once there's the time jump and we go on to the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. He moves to, I believe, Seattle um, or like some somewhere in Washington. Yeah, some some small forested town that can, that can but, easily but I, be I feel like I see like I see like stuff like that looks like Washington, like that looks like Seattle though. 
So it might be in the area. Okay. But um, he basically goes to a, um, he basically uh, rents a house from the historical society mm-hmm. that turns out to have some weird shit going on. Uh oh. It's a ghost. Spooky it's a spirit. Scary. Um, and basically it's him trying to figure out what exactly why this ghost cannot rest. Yes. And through that uncovers um a secretive thing involving a, a senator a conspiracy a conspiracy will. yeah involving um swap like swapping and replacing a child a changeling a changeling <laughs> like the t- like i remember you like we were watching the movie and like he said it like you were like oh that's why it's called that <laughs> yeah and mm. I, I have moments like that too where it's like why is this called that and it's like then it's like uh... it's immediately answered but um Basically, it's him going through this this investigate this what this two person investigation because he's also working with uh, an actor like uh, this character played by an actress I haven't heard of before Trisha Van Devere mm-hmm. I haven't heard of her before and actually like in terms of like the film itself uh, Peter Medic is a f- director I'm very unfamiliar with so it was very much shocking that he had not done much horror mm. at all other than this. And okay. the fact that he made like one of the like the best like, in my opinion, one of the best like haunted house movies or like, yeah. in my, for me the best ghost story, mm-hmm. is, is surprising. It's it, you know goes to show like if you just know the assignment you're good at what you do, um, and it just like, it just goes through and it features one of the best seance scenes, I've ever seen. Probably okay. the probably like you know it's just, like there's stuff like Night of the Demon, not the Bigfoot one, but. The third one called it's called Curse of the it's from it's from the fifties it's like there's a seance scene that's like super hokey and stuff but like this was so atmospheric and so creepy mm-hmm. the seance and it hit all the right beats yeah in, in order to really impact you mm-hmm. because once that scene ends uh, John Russell he replays he's he records the seance he plays it back and then, you hear the little boy. He hears the boy saying, you know, answering before uh, the, you know, the answer itself is written down. I will say, I was very happy when they did that. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't like the class, like, he hears a little something, he turns it up. Like, he gets to, like, adjust it. He just turn, he just immediately hears it. It was like... Yeah. Yeah, no. Because there's always that scene where it's like, they're playing, it's like, they hear a little something. They adjust it. They hear it again. Just yeah, it's like, oh my god, get on with it. We got no, it. No, it, it, the pacing is very good. Yeah. I was just like, I was shocked by like the fact that it's like it's a it's a slow burn, obviously. Uh huh. But you're constantly invested. I was never bored for a second. No, no, no. It's like this is like true slow cinema, you know. It's like in actually, some regard. filmmaking with craft and patience and and, 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 and talent and shot comp and great shot composition. It's so weird to see that. Yeah, no, I like. There's like a, there's a few shots where like like the characters like will like close it on the camera you oh know, from, i love from the shit. behind yeah. or like the camera will like mm. zoom into the bushes and then mm. cut to something else yeah it's really it's really cool and i am so glad that i got that seven blu-ray because god knows they need to release something other than edward porn <laughs> yes i will say when when we first yeah like, hey let's watch the changeling when i came to this film i knew nothing about it mm. I, I didn't even look at the plot i didn't know i didn't look yeah. I, I literally this poster looks neat i'm not i'm not gonna look at anything about it and then I saw the seven logo. I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> oh no!" Because like, I was thinking, it's like it's gonna be like, you know, a mom eats her son, and then like her, she gives birth to a full-grown man who has tentacles and starts mm-hmm. having sex with dogs and shooting goo at us. There's some crazy Severin shit. Uh huh. I was like, "Oh, it's like a just a genuine good slow yeah ghost story. Mm-hmm. There's no weird porn." Yeah. I was so happy. I, I will, for the record, I will say I love Severin. <laughs> oh, Severin's great because them and also um, uh, uh, a, a syndrome. Uh, Vigor syndrome's great. Yeah, the, they're both very similar to me. They're very both, similar. Yeah, they, they just released Vigor syndrome. Trash. Vigor syndrome released Devil Story. Yes, that's how they're. That's how our Milwaukee boys were able to get a yeah. 4K of, get like a good scan of it. To God watch. bless them. God bless them, because that looked they're, amazing. Yep. They're bringing back trash in a good way. No, exactly. It's, but this it's, is not it's trash. A crap, but this is this is art. This is high, this is high art horror. That's like a Criterion thing. 
like well I feel like I feel like I mean, obviously I don't think it would but, but I'm saying like I could see this the, like, like stuff like the uninvited quality. or the others yeah. or uh, the innocents exactly yeah, yeah like, it's like just classic. a genuinely well done I could see that going like next to the ghost movies in criteria yeah, yeah. exactly but you know what Severin got to it first and like hey, uh, fuck, fuck, uh, fuck you fuck. now it's like for me, it's like the prize gem of my Severin collection. Yes, it is probably the me. best Severin film they've released, or best I, film they released I, in Severin. I have to think about like what other uh, what other ones were of like really high quality. I can't think of any. Ed Wood porn. Ed Wood porn. The best. Porn. I, I actually like. I'm not gonna get that. Bro. I know. I'm not. No, absolutely. No. But, like I, I need that Bruce. I need that Bruce exploitation box set, man. Yeah. I need to get that shit. I do actually kind of... Actually, no, 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 no. You, no, you don't. You, <laughs> you like, can come to my house and... The, well, first, you have to watch the actual Bruce Lee movies. No, no. Let's talk about the porn. Oh, okay. I'll take that. How about you get the Ed Wood porn and I get the Bruce exploitation box? And we're going to have a big watch party. We're going to have a big watch party and everybody's yeah, invited. I'm, I'm not going to... First of all, the Ed Wood porn would just depress me. Oh, really? Because it would just remind you, like, oh, that's where he ended up. Well, the problem is that... He, He's in them a lot, and he's always oh. just shit faced and just like. Okay. But was like, ah. and I'm like, girl, it's like, oh. it just like it's it, it ruins that like, kind of the, uh, the, the magic of. Well, I mean, Edward. it's always been there. Like even at the end of Ed Wood, it's like he's he, like he, he died, died drunk, drunk and penniless, penniless making yeah. porn. He died drunk and penniless. But, <laughs> but it's also just but seeing that yeah. is is like but seeing it unfold is a whole new level of yeah. depressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'm, I'm you know what. It's cool you're doing it. It's a unique box set. I'm good. Yeah, no, it's like, I, I am good. I don't need that shit. Um, the Changeling is a film that I feel like it it could be so basic in yeah. a way it is, but so good it was. Yeah. Uh, inspired fucking, like, I, I can't help but feel like inspired Silent Hill somewhat, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, here's the thing. Basic isn't bad. No. That, people always say, like, oh, it's basic. As long, if it's good, then it's good. Like mm. if it's just like guys in a haunted house, spooky shit happens. Yeah, no, that's that's really if it's what done it is, well. That's all there's to it. You know, well, there's also the big conspiracy. The big too. conspiracy, yeah. Like, because like the first half, I was like, okay, this is cool. He's like he's looking up the past. He's like going through newspaper articles, library, trying to figure it out. Cool. And then when it gets to like, whoa, this is like, like this is getting like political and dark. Like yeah. they, like you find out what's going on. And it's like oh. Uh-huh. Damn! No wonder the ghost is pissed off. I'd be pissed too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's... Like there's there's certain imagery with that sings Silent Hill. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where there's like the shot of like the uh, the 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 wheelchair like on on its side mm-hmm. and the wheel is turning. That's a shot from Silent Hill Three. Yeah. When uh uh fucking the the senator is his spirit is like walking ascending the staircase that's on fire. That's from Silent Hill 2. Hey, old man, can you walk up these stairs while you film you? <laughs> while we fire? film you, while the uh, while the set is burning, I'm sure it was controlled enough. Oh my like, God, yes. There's no way. They yeah, would no do fucking that. way they would do that. I was like, old man, me, we'd be like, fuck you, fuck no. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's just I was just happy with such a well done piece of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. We needed that this time around because we didn't get much time for the other films where it's like it's just a classy. <laughs> it's the it, best it, film we watched for this episode. Yeah, honestly. They're not even not even a competition. Not even a competition. It's a, it's, it's just, just a good piece of filmmaking. No, yeah, no, it's it's excellent. And I'm sorry, like with very few problems. No, yeah, I, honestly, yeah. What if you had to scr- if you had to scrape up like a change a lot, like a pocket full of change of like different things that like he felt like could have done better? Because he gave it a four and a half. Yes. Um, Can you think of any? If you can't, there, there's, like there's a, a few. There's a few. Okay, okay. I feel like the, the first, I say, twenty thirty minutes was very kind of explaining that, like just mm-hmm. like, uh, I mean, obviously you have to do that. Sometimes. You have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I but and, like. But just like on your personal experience, where it's just, like to me, showing him being sad is probably better for me than just I'm yeah. Sad. Because I I point and also I, like the fact his family died, that kind of gets forgotten. Like the whole family yeah. died. Like that doesn't come back later, really. Like because so his family dying it's like the main catalyst for him moving, mm-hmm. moving out, finding yeah. a new place. And but yeah. it's like and then when the ghost stuff happens, like that doesn't come back. Where he's not talking to the ghost, like he's a dad or anything. like he's not using mm. his grief to help. It's just kind of like conspiracy. Like the, the, the family gets forgotten. The movie ends. Yeah, that was a little kind of. like, I mean, I get it, but it's just kind of. Like, I feel like did you would you have wanted like a sort of like a Exorcist style resolution, like falling action, where it's like an epilogue in a certain way. Not even well, because like one. Th- I mean, the other thing is that the ghost Joseph. 
Uh, his I, I didn't know what he wanted. I feel like he just wanted like some sort of like sense of truth or justice. I don't know. But like, but like, when the lady comes back, she, it, he just attacks her. Yeah, like, I, I feel like he's just as at, like at the last out. end of the rope. I guess I don't know. What? But the, the why attack her? I guess. Yeah. I don't what, know. What was, well, but it's the fact that you said I don't know is the problem. Like, like yeah. Like, because if the ghost wants justice, great. But well, I know, or I know. if the ghost is becoming more and more like angry, uh uh-huh. progressively. That, but like, it, it seems like kind of, he's like a sweet kind of little like, boy. Sweet little boy, he's talking. Then I hate you, and it's like there's kind of an element of tension between Georgie Scott's character and a character who doesn't even have. Besides, like, a character who doesn't really, like, in a way exist because it's the ghost, right? Oh, the ghost. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure if you are going to talk about it. Like, no, about it. but, um, you know, besides, like, voiceover and, like, stand in for, like, a kid, you know, yeah. in the in the bathtub. Yeah. In drowning, you know. Um, but th- that kind of dichotomy between, like, the grieving, living Bob, George e. Scott yeah. and this kid who was murdered, there's kind of that, that relationship, that dynamic – is fascinating to me when yeah. one one of them isn't even really portrayed by a performance, you know. Yeah, I feel like I feel like his grief is kind of put aside for the main conspiracy plot. That that's my biggest problem with the film. It's like okay. his his there's grief no, is not. Do you feel like there wasn't a resolution to no. it? Okay. It's like he's sad, and then he gets side. Like he, I don't think he mentions his family for like the last half of the film. Mm. Like people mentioned it, but like he's not like. Well, I feel like it's just like it, 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 it'd be saying something we already know. You know, he's already feeling. It doesn't have to be said. He's already feeling this like overwhelming amount of. But grief. he didn't feel sad that half last. He seemed more determined about the ghost stuff. Like he seemed more like. Well, because uh, he's he's fed up with it, you know. Yeah, but like, the the fact I think it should have focused on the fact that he, as a father, has to hear about a, another father, t- killing the thing he wanted, like. Someone who lost a child by accident has to hear about someone who who did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. To me, that's like a good tragedy they could have, because like because he sees like the guy at well, the end because who's like he like faints though when he learns the truth about not the, not the whole truth but like what happened to Joseph. But like I mean like at the end when he when he meets the changing like the senator, uh-huh. the senator's just like breaking down sobbing. Mm-hmm. I feel like they could have done more with like like him. Losing the chance to be a father versus someone who's just a shitty father who's a murderer. I feel like they could have done something more with that. Okay. Because, it, because again, like the family stuff, because mm-hmm. after it's over, because you were explaining the plot, I was like, oh yeah, his family died. <laughs> I yeah. kinda, like it's such a striking, like <laughs> tragic image at the beginning, and it's just kind of mm-hmm. like, I kind of forgot about it. And like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's that should be more centric to the plot, personally. Okay. That, I, that's my main okay. complaint. And, okay. and my complaint, I mean, a nitpick. Yeah, because it's so well made. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And that that last shot of like the uh, oh the house, the wheelchair, the, the ash that's just yeah. complete rubble. In the in the and the, the, the music, music box. box yeah. yeah. Well, how do you feel? Speaking of the music box, how do you feel about the music itself? Fucking love music. That music. Yeah, no, it's I'm not, a huge it's fan. Not on Spotify, man. Fuck you, Spotify. No, but I love. I'm a huge fan of piano. Mm-hmm. I love love classical music as just like yeah. <laughs> I have a little playlist of classical music. Yeah. And I love music boxes. Mm. So I was like, those three things, like, yeah. <laughs> that sealed the deal for you, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Because, like, there's not a lot of, like, really classical music horror scores anymore. That, well, there's that, like I mentioned, the psychic thing, the, the the seven notes in black. That's one, but not much else. That, that Halloween well, is kind of like a music box vibe to it a little bit. A little bit, but it's more like a synthetic kind of, like, it's unnatural. A, it's, a, it's a synth stuff, yeah. Yeah, but like, it's not I, like... It's not like classic piano, yeah. Yeah, that... Yeah, but yeah, I think the changeling is was a was a monumental pleasant surprise. Thank you for showing it to me. Yeah, of course. I I very I, I love George C. Scott in general. He's just he's a great actor. I love mm. that guy. Oh yeah. I, um, I love the great imagery. I'm, I'm glad it, it it took itself very seriously. Because mm. <laughs> like. To me, a horror film can be more sad than scary because, like, this film's yeah. it's a sad movie. It's a sad movie. Everybody uh, one loses. Th- one thing I one thing I want to mention is that one of my favorite scenes is when like he thinks about his like wife and child, mm-hmm. and he's just crying. He's bawling in his uh, in his bedroom, mm-hmm. just sobbing, and then he hears the banging. 
but then it's like his his grief period is interrupted by this like this unnatural force. Yeah. He was just like what the he's like just like he's like he's crying he's crying and he's just like what the fuck is you yeah, know? yeah I well, love that yeah. scene because it, it's just like it could have been like it needed an expert performance from George Scott yeah. to pull that off you know where he's just like he's confused but he's also like trying to like wear off the sadness in order mm-hmm. to figure out what's going on you know yeah love that but yeah no um, what would you give the changeling I give it a four and a half hell out yeah. five I give it a five. Yeah, so Hell check yeah. it out. Check it's out good. the Changeling. All right, what was our next movie, Ben? Oh, <laughs> the classic, the monumental, the operatic, if you will, Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> and I think a of... modern masterpiece of the day. Let's be honest. No, with you. the greatest <laughs> film ever made. So it's like it feels it, 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 was, it was it was built up as being like well like this like. Uh-huh. This big thing, this big event, because it's just like it's it's ho- it's it's Halloween time. Final Fantasy Freddy's is coming out. It's the adaptation of the the horror series that uh, eight year olds and twelve year olds love alike. Fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> dick. <laughs> and uh, you know everybody's gonna go see it, and it comes off like any other low budget Blumhouse production. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's just like, and then it made a shit ton of money because yep. it was so cheap to make, and because the IP was popular. So yeah. So ten times its budget. Wow, yeah. So it was made for like twenty million, and it made two hundred million. Mm-hmm. So yeah, <laughs> getting the sequel. Getting the sequel, baby. Um, so I want to get some positives out of the way. The set design is really good. I yes. really like it. I like it the looks fact like an actual include... pizzeria. Nice, and I like the fact that they include like classic arcade cabinets. Oh, yeah. That's there's like some there's some cool images <laughs> images in the movie every now and yeah. again, you know. Like uh, Foxy, like yeah, the, the little kid. He goes back in the curtain and comes back out. That's cool. I like that. Um, the music is the music's good. I love, you know, I love the I, opening I don't like credits. It, I don't like it as much as you do, but it, it uh, gives off the right vibe, you know. Um, I, I, I Matthew Lillard. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Lillard, which plays into not nearly enough Matthew Lillard. <laughs> yeah. So I talked with with you last night, but this film has a very interesting history. Okay. As in, it's it's been in production since 2015, uh-huh. and it came out last year. Mm-hmm. So, let's see, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. That is uh, eight years in production. Wow. Because mostly just, you know, the classic just jumping through hoops. They couldn't decide on what mm-hmm. the story should be. Because mm-hmm. originally it was going to be like Plushies Take Manhattan. Oh, God. Yeah. And it was going to be that. based on the book series, which has a different lore. Okay. But then Scott Coffin was like, I feel like this should be just like a trilogy based on the first three games. Mm-hmm. And so he wrote the script several times to different screenwriters. Mm-hmm. Chris Columbus was involved. It was in Warner Brothers. Bada ba. It went to Blumhouse and, and like good old Jason Blum gave him basically free reign. Okay. Like literally like like <laughs> he kept like rewriting the script over and over again. Okay. So and they made it. And like he was like, I want and he, he had a lot of demands. I think he, he was the one who said I wanted it to be practical costumes for the yeah. not like CGI. He That's another positive. Jim is those those uh, pup those animatronics or like the suits are great. You and, know? and Foxy's and the only one who's like an actual full puppet is Foxy. Wow. Because like all Foxy, it was all just either a robot or people controlling mm. because he because his costumes like you can see through. Like you can see just, through it. Yeah. So there's no way you can fit a human in there. So mm-hmm. and of course the cupcake. The cupcake. Yeah, fucking cupcake. The cupcake has, like, I, I was seeing all the stuff about the cupcake. Having the big body and, count. Having the big body count. Yeah, exactly. And that was super weird for me because yeah. I was just like, wouldn't you expect, like, Freddy or, like, I don't know, Bonnie to have, like, the most body count? Or, well, the like, reason they chose the cupcake is partly because because originally, the, like, the, the event scene with the guys invading the restaurant, there was yeah. a scene where, like, they're like, Lower the cupcake and like look at the camera, like <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But was, t- 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 the cupcake gave them more opportunities for more dynamic things to do. Mm-hmm. I guess that was the idea. I just think it's funny. <laughs> it's yeah, just, it's, just, it's just I yeah. So okay, the plot, the plot. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, let me stretch my back. Time to go into some FNAF lore <laughs> real quick. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, I'm trying to get the sounds. In yeah. There. Oh, I, I, okay, close enough. Um, <laughs> so, back in the 80s, 
They've waited. Way, way back in the 1980s. Back, <laughs> yeah. Way, way back, back in, in the 1980s. 1980s. Matthew Lillard went crazy. <laughs> got a bunch of kids at Freddy's and put them in robotic bodies. That works. That came out of nowhere. I didn't even do Dude, plan. hell yeah. But yeah, so basically, there's five murders. Wait. Bunny, Bunny, Chico, Freddy. Yeah, five murders that took place in, f- in the restaurant... F- Party fast Fazbear's Pizza, mm. and they never found the bodies. They couldn't find them. And then years later, the, the restaurant shut down because of it. And so this guy named Mike, who has some serious trauma to work through because he beats up a dad, yeah, <laughs> like savagely for <laughs> grabbing a kid, roughly. Uh-huh. Has some serious problems to work mistaken, through. Mistaken, mistaken for a, for a kidnapper, but like, don't punch <laughs> a guy if you don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah, or pummel uh, him or. And or tackle him or into tackle a fountain. Or tackle him into a fountain. Come on. Just like, what What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, so he goes to this guy named Steve Raglan, played by the lovable Matthew. Matthew Taylor, definitely not the bad guy. Yeah. Um, and he suggests, hey, there's a night shift at Freddy's. The pay sucks and the hours suck, but it's a job. And so he works at Freddy's and then spooky shit happens. And mm. then his shitty aunt wants to... Wants he wants his sister for the for the checks from the government, uh-huh. which is not a lot of money in those checks. So I don't know why. I think raising a child is much harder than oh, whatever. Yeah, it's like why? Come on, man. Just we need to just give her guy. up. Yeah. Anyway, um, so she hires a bunch of these kind of like these just these punk redneck guys. Yeah. To go into Freddy's, break in and break shit, so he gets in trouble. This upsets the animatronics, but not not. But during that scene where they arrange the, what what happens, Matt Pat shows up, the best cameo in the film. <laughs> where he's, I love, I love it so much. Where he's just like, it was like, where he's just like, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, but that's just a well, that's just a theory. <laughs> although, fun fact, that scene was the first scene in the whole film shot. That was wow. the first tra- scene they shot in the whole film. Wow. And you were telling me about how Markiplier was supposed to be in the movie. Yep. He, so, so the opening scene shows a guard who's a previous guard trying to escape the animatronics, and he gets he gets got, mm-hmm. as, as the kids say. <laughs> and uh, because originally that was supposed to be Markiplier, mm-hmm. however, he is currently working on his own horror film called Iron Lung, mm-hmm. so he couldn't make it, and so they they just cast this other guy, mm-hmm. which I mean it, it makes I mean. You get the idea. They they press people into the suit. Although, I think in the games it's scarier how they d- describe it because it's more like they'll just shove your face in and like just crush it. Because in, but in the film it's yeah. like a saw trap. Yeah, I mean it's it's neat. I it's guess neat, it's a neat imagery. You know, but it's just like it, it, it's know. not as that's the problem. Like, <laughs> have you ever played the first game? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I I think there's a great atmosphere in that, like the sound design and like. Mm-hmm. Because like you hear just like the fans whirling, and, yeah, like, the crunching of the. There's of a the great key. atmosphere for that game. Not know? in the movie. Not not that's no. not no no it's not. not a little bit. Watching the animatronics is barely a part of the movie. Yeah, which is like it's fine because you need like something happening, but like, I don't know. Like I'm thinking about like movies that have like simplistic ideas and like situations. Because like the idea of finance phrase is like you have to survive five nights, and you get a check. It's like, like why not just do that? Why not just do? Yeah, no, I, I, it's so so much better things could have been done with this movie, but it, they decided to like make it like a murder mystery, a little like mostly. Well, so like, I mean, that's always been part of. Well, finale. yeah, but, but, but the thing like, is, like the audience is the audience figured. is, but like the, the guys that you're playing. There's just no want sense to get... of there's no such a claustrophobia. Nope. There's no sense of like agency or like nope. you know. I just there's nothing. Fort building. Fort, yeah. <laughs> Where the, I, you told me that was like that. This is the most infamous scene in the movie. Yeah, it's it's the most. Um, they start lifting furniture. So yeah. b- basically, later in the film, uh, so Mike has to take his sister to work because his babysitter, he he, he he doesn't know this, but he's chomp, she's chomped in half by Freddy. Uh huh. My favorite kill in the movie because he gets well, yeah, because yeah, half. and you actually see it too. Yeah. So, but so basically. He has to take her to work just because there's no other place to put her. Mm. And basically, Abby becomes friends with all the robotic children. Mm. And they're like, let's build a fort. <laughs> it's like, I get what you're doing. It's just not working. <laughs> what, what what are we doing here? It's like, I, 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 here? I, I get it. You know, they're, they're, you show that they're innocent kids playing. But it's like... <sighs> 
it's just uh, it's just not working, buddy. It's just like it's just like that. What like Vonnie falls and gives the thumbs up. Like, hey, are you okay? Like, what what are we doing here? Yeah, this is not scary. No, and um, of course, there's my least favorite character, Vanessa, the cop, mm. who is the ultimate trope of like. Don't go there. It's haunted. Well, why? I'm not. Are, are there any other cops in this movie? <laughs> like, no, no, they're not. No, no. Like in the universe of this movie, I mean, like where it's just like, uh, yeah. do other cops exist? I think the idea is that uh, her beat, like her her driving around, is oh. is around Freddy's. Oh, I guess so. so. That, that's like her area. Okay. But I mean, and like, and there's a character named Vanessa in the games. It's a totally different character. But like, and I get what they're doing here. She, she, she's the classic like, she knows the history. She's uh-huh. explaining the characters. Like, she's doing it such an asinine way. So what you're saying is, this is the Dragon Ball evolution of Five Nights at Freddy's. I have not seen Dragon Ball evolution. It's like it's basically it's like it's it's a, it's, a, it's a movie that's a shame to be like a Dragon Ball movie. And I I I wouldn't say it's a shame to be a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Not no not in that regard. But like I guess a better way to explain it is that like. Oh, this character's name is this, but it's totally po- different character. Totally different character, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, but I don't know. Like, it's 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 such a weird move because there's things I like about it objectively, but like, it's just the script was it's so. A, it's such a mess. Dude. Yeah. It's a, it's a, this was not like it was a chore, honestly. Oh. No, I don't care. It's just like it makes I, I was, me sad because I wanted you to enjoy it. Well, I mean, it's like it had its moments, but like it just it just did not do it for me because of the yeah. fact that like it was just so so bland. And there's like the, the the recurring dream that was just like if you could shoot this in the woods like five times over in one shoot, and then we can like save so much money. You know, that's how it came off as. Not yeah. as like oh my god, this is so scary. You know. Yeah, and like the wood. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to picture in my head what the process was for making because that dream thing is a totally new. That was that's on the game. Yeah, there's no yeah, yeah. dream. There is like I like, guess like the whole like cutscene playable yeah. cutscenes. Yeah, but thing. that's like it's arcade like, graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the opening credits of the movie because yeah, because no, that was yeah. a big reference to that. Mm-hmm. But and, although I, I I did like this time I noticed in the opening credits the actress for. Uh, Vanessa and uh, and uh, Matthew Pillard, mm-hmm. they were different. They were colored purple. Oh shit! I'm going. Okay. Yeah, like I'm going. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think we both agree the best part is is Matthew, Matthew Lillard, spring trap. especially when he goes like, full spring trap. Full spring trap. You know, he, it, that's he, great. He's doing the clue or the scream, the scream thing. Yeah, yeah. where he like wipes off the blade. Yeah, with his with his thumb Man, and index yeah. finger. Yeah, I mean. Well, because I think everybody loves Springtrap, just the character, because he's because he's the main antagonist of the whole series. Really? Like, okay. And like, even F three, like he has a genuine, like just scary design. Like, yeah, it's freaky looking. It's like there's you see like guts and like bone in it, but still like, it's, like glitching and shit. Like, I'm uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get genuinely just freaky looking. Mm-hmm. And like you know, and of course, just hearing Matthew Lillard go full. No, hear him go like scream, full, scream level, just evil, evil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Love it's it. just like, oh my god, this is like, this is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for like more like Stu Mocker type stuff. Exactly. So it's and he's like, just Stu. You created like, very. Stupid. I love it so much. I'm just, oh, I'm so mad. If I we didn't get any more of them. But thankfully, he's confirmed he'll have more stuff to do in the in the two okay, sequels. Okay. Like he'll, Sounds good. Yeah, this one was definitely. Because uh, uh, because uh, uh, Scott Coff himself said he knows the problems with like he knows what we're talking about. Yeah, at least there's that, at least to, there's that awareness. Yes, that, like because like what this is his first ever feature length screenplay he's ever written. Fair enough, you know. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad he's gonna try and do better, and I'm yeah I'm, I'm excited to see where the fuck this goes. Yeah, because 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 in the games because at the end of this film, spoiler, he gets he gets a spring locked. Mm. I, I love him the dying scene where like <laughs> yeah no, that's pretty cool yeah and so basically in the games he's he's locked in the back room but in the game it's it's for thirty years okay so like he he's taken out for like a horror attraction but like so he's just rotting there twitching for thirty years just going even more insane wow so I, I, I'm wondering where they're going with this so mm-hmm. I'm I'm here's the thing I I saw this last Halloween 
I bought a ticket for another human being who couldn't make it. Well, because I was like, I was tired. I was just tired, man. I would have slept through it. It was snowing too. Was it? Oh, it was. It, it snowed that day. Oh, but, that's right. Yeah. I was just. T- it was a weekday. I was tired, so. Yeah, I guess. Well, now we're doing it for the, I, I, the I, podcast. I, 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 I'm just joking. Okay. I mean, because I, I'm because like that. That was the way I. It's the best way to just hearing people freak out over just seeing Spring Trap because like oh. I didn't think Spring Trap was gonna be in it because mm. like. I mean, you saw him a little bit in the trailer, but I thought that was like an extra thing they shot because like because like yeah. Spring Trap doesn't show up until like the second game. Okay. So I thought they were gonna like Matthew Lillard was gonna show up for that first scene and like. Like like an end credits Avengers thing where like he comes back to look at all the animatronics or something, but yeah. Now we got f- like his full death scene, which I I love. That's, That's nice. cool. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So I enjoy it because it's dumb. It, 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 I I I know that feeling though. I yeah, where it's like it, it it listen. It's not. It's it's a bad movie overall. I'd say it's a little below mediocre. Mm. But there's something I just enjoy watching it. I don't know why it's it's like objectively just. I mean, it's got some good shots. It's 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 competent. Yeah, it's, a, it's competent. It's a, yeah, but it's just it's just not very good. <sighs> yes, but I don't know. It's 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 this film and the Angry Game Nerd movie where it's like okay. they're both bad, but I like them. Yeah, I feel that way about certain movies too. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, also, I, I just love FNAF. Yeah, I don't know why. Just, there's just, something about it. It's just I, I've grown out of that. Not uh, not that it's like a bad thing. To, like still be a fan. I'm no, just no. Like, it's not really yeah. like just my thing anymore. You know. Yeah. Because like, th- th- this film does something that a lot of films don't do right, and that's like references. Mm. Where like, that's true. Where like, there's a scene early on. He's at like a. It's like a frozen yogurt thing. Yeah. And he's buying a frozen yogurt, on the cash register. There's like a rainbow that has like a big smiley face on it. Mm-hmm. That's the villain from an RPG called FNAF World, where it's like the final boss is like so it's just like a quick little like just hey it's wow. the final, but it, it okay. fits so well because it's it's not distracting like hey remember this from the game. That's it's just a lot like, better than like including uh, including like resurrection on like the on like the side of like a preacher's car in Halloween 2018 or like. The Halloween three masks. Well, that was fine though. I yeah, guess. but like just like it's just it's just in the background. Yeah, people who know are like, people, oh, that's cute. Like, oh, that's cool. Easter eggs, yeah. you know. Yeah, and there's other stuff like that, and but or even okay. One thing I learned last night because I was googling facts we could talk about. Mm. So there's there's two main cameos. There's Matt Pet and Corey mm. the taxi driver. Yep. But there's a the, the people are inside the house. They're just breaking shit. Huh? There's a quick framed thing of like employee of the month, and he smashed all every picture on that. Or like like or like the streamers who got it's like all the pictures in that little thing are just oh, wow. famous streamers who got it where it was. Yeah, that's cool. I it's like, like that. It's not like I mean, you can barely even make it out because it's like dusty, but it's like it's there's Daco. <laughs> nice. And like there's um, yeah, but it's just, it's just a fun little, like oh. Mm-hmm. Just knowing that is like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. It's not like, hey, remember Daco? Remember that guy? He did. He's British and does videos on FNAF. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. And also, of course, the great end credits song, the classic among classics. Oh. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> this where you. I'll, 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 I'll I always remember it as it. the kid doing the yep. fucking talent show things. Five Nights at Freddy's. But it's like I remember for months people were like. Is that song going to be in the movie? Is it going to be? They're asking the people in charge of the film, like, are you going to put it in? Are you going to put it in? Like, all I don't the, know if, all if the, we have time, you know. All the important stuff. Yeah. But, but it's just, you know, it's just, well, yeah, it's it's just a neat. nice little nice little touch, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it, it's like, it's, like putting, it, 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 it's much appreciated. It's like putting Don't Free the Reaper at the end of Halloween Ends, you know? Yes. It's like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. No, I felt that when I was watching Halloween Ends for the yeah. first time, you know? So. We both say it's not very good, but if but if if you, you check, it, check out, it, if you're a fan of the series, I I can't imagine it being too disappointing. It's I can or imagine... or just go online and watch all the scenes with Springtrap. Yeah, no, all all that stuff. Just like watch like the like Matthew the, Lillard compilation. Like how much of that like is well like 15 minutes probably of screen yeah. time. So watch that and watch the opening scene and the opening and, credits because like those and the end credits and then you're good. Yep. <laughs> 
What would like, you, what would you, oh, sorry, go ahead. And, yeah, I mean, I, I, it sucks because I know what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. It's just you needed not that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm excited for the sequel, but and I'm finally happy I finally got Noah to watch it. Mm-hmm. It's been a year in the making. It's been, it's, it's been in my back pocket. It's like I know he's going to hate this, but I really want him to watch it. <laughs> so... Yeah, check it out if you're a if you're a furry. What would you? <laughs> right. What would you give it? What would you give? I gave it a two, but with a heart. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, like it's bad, I, but I give it a one and a half, with no which heart. I feel like is fair. It, it is very fair. I think it's very fair to say that I did not. It's, you didn't it's not, appreciate it as not, much as I did. It's not horrendous. No, it, it's just it, bad. It's just mm, straight up bad. Mm, mm, mm. It's not the worst Blumhouse movie for sure. No, oh the, yeah, no, it's like. Not. It's like in the it's, top it's five, probably. Top five. <laughs> like, I, True. I can't think of a better... I mean, that and Get Out. Oh, that was Blumhouse? Yep. Oh, well, pff, yeah. Yeah, right. that's, that's objectively probably the best Blumhouse. Um, oh, uh, non-horror. In terms of non-horror, Whiplash. That was produced by Blumhouse. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that, Us, I think, is Blumhouse, too. Okay. So, like, so like, the got, Jordan Peele stuff is Jordan like Peele, FNAF, stuff. and Whiplash <laughs> are probably the top five or whatever. Because the rest uh, is just like trigger or like uh, tic tac toe. Or because like, demons created or, to uh, summon demons. Tarot or, or truth or dare. Let's go. I, oh my god. I think being a horror fan Blumhouse is like. needs to go back to making R rated movies. Being a horror fan oh, is hard um, sometimes because, like, most of what comes out is too. trash. Upgrade Upgrade was good. I liked Upgrade. <laughs> I think that was Blumhouse. I, I believe so, yeah. So, like, a lot of their not horror stuff is pretty good. <laughs> it's kind of like, I still like, there's, like, horror elements. Yeah, there's it's a revenge there, movie, but, like, there's still, like, there's gross, graphic, there's, yeah. like, graphic stuff. And Blumhouse needs to go more, back to making R rated. Dude, I, there was a Five Nights Phrase movie script. That was R rated. It's online. I read it. It's so much better. What? Well, in terms of like entertainment, because oh, okay. like the opening scene where like the guy, the mask. I thought it was gonna be like the most complex thing ever. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the same. It's basic, still the but, same but, thing, but but like yeah. just you know gore. Okay. Which you know wouldn't have made any better, but would have made like okay. I I pay, the, the kills I, were just kind of like they kind of just happened. At least like I would have had that, you know. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a gore hound, you know, but like because the first scene with the with the big thing coming, like it shows what happens. It was wow, like, <laughs> you can definitely feel like there's they're cutting edges. Yeah, in terms of even if they didn't shoot any of it, in terms of like yeah. they're definitely like shying away from anything that could make anything that could possibly make the. The movie in R. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we're, we're, we're like, what the heck? Golly, G. Willikers! It's just like, oh my god! Just, yeah, like I'm just imagining like, like, like the whole thing with the with the spring locks, like just uh, blood coming out. Because like this, he gets stabbed in the stomach. If this remained the eighties, it would have been given like a PG. Yeah, which is well because it, I think PG thirteen is like the death of cinema. A little bit. You're you're not wrong. <laughs> it's like because it's like we can say we can say fuck once. Yeah, they didn't say fuck once in this movie. I was very upset. They, they, instead, they said, "Oh my goodness!" and heck. Yeah, or, or like symmetry, my friend, go fuck yourself, and then gets kicked. <laughs> it's like this guy killed your little brother, and you're just like, "That's not nice." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, it doesn't make sense in terms of like, it's that marketability, like yeah. so kids can see it, you know. Yeah, it's, but that, that, the problem is that it works though. Like if this was, if this was our, I don't think it would have gotten it would not have two hundred million successful, dollars, yeah, which so, is upsetting. But hope, is maybe ups- in, maybe the next film they'll make it R. I, yeah, no, may, maybe we'll see. But then they'll lose their tar- you lose your target audience. <laughs> Wait, what'd you just say? <laughs> you lose your target audience. Oh, I thought you said something else. Okay, <laughs> I thought you said you. <laughs> what you said to death. Oh, I can see how you. <laughs> Because I sometimes I, sometimes I mesh my words together, so <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, whoa!" Sometimes I no, 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 no. You you're lose, gonna have to bleep that. You, yeah, we're gonna. You lose your target audience. Thank you. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah. So again, I'm excited for the sequel okay. because I'm thinking it's gonna be a prequel. We'll see more of. Uh, good old Matthew Lillard. Okay. Because I know he has a lot more to do. Okay. That. Well, shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, the first film is bad, but I like it. Okay, I would not recommend it. 
Oh. I was just like, no, thumbs down. Well, I just, I just agree, Roger. I thought Final Fantasy exactly was a great this, film. That's exactly what this is. We're, we're, let's see. I'm Ebert and you're definitely Siskel. Okay. I think, I, right? I'm like, I'm, I, I think yeah, I think you'd be yeah. more Siskel because I'm of like the Siskel, two of us. I'm like genre film Siskel. Okay. Because yeah. you, you like stuff, like you're more sentimental about stuff. And I'm just like, more like, oh, the craft, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's oh, it's right. a bit more cold, a bit stuff, but, you know. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, Check it out. That was Five Minutes at Freddy's. Or don't. I don't care. I'll pull down your underwear. I was about to say that, too. <laughs> All right. What's the next film on our agenda, the sir? Mo- the most, in terms of titles, the most apt selection for our Halloween episode. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. The night the no season. one comes home. Oh. And the night we don't go out and see it because I just didn't feel like it. So... The Cinematech was showing this, and it was shown on film, but we were just like, fuck it. We it was like, we don't yeah, we're lazy. By, by the time it ended, I, I just like, drove from Oshkosh to Madison. Yeah, no, I seriously. I, I'm tired. Yeah, no. But like, by the time like we reached like the, the hour mark, I was like, hey, Ben, the movie mm-hmm. was started by now. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, there's a film playing before that, Dark yeah, Harvest. Dark, I was like, we just didn't want to see it, yeah, I was like, ah. personally. Just don't. It's, it's too much. Too much movies in one day. Um, but that's, that's never a problem. That's sir. never a problem. No, no. What are you Who talking? are you and what are you doing with Noah? <laughs> Seriously. But yeah, no. Um, Halloween three is an interesting history because of the fact that like it was preceded by a movie that features Michael Myers. So it's like okay, but then they kill him off in in the in Halloween yeah, like he's 2. dead, dead. He's dead, dead. He's he going was... to a crisp. So no, he comes back. He's he's he beefier back, and he's, he's just like little scars. Beefier, he has scars on his body. Whatever. That's it. Bum, bum, um, bum, Mr. Sandman. Yeah, that's the best addition to, in that movie is the the association of, of Halloween of Halloween the franchise with that song, Mr. Mm-hmm. Sandman, by the Cornettes. Um, so Halloween three does not feature the the big elephant in the room is that it does not feature Michael Myers. Big shock. It's the I mean he's on the TV. <laughs> he's on. The, he he is technically on the TV and in 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 the movie. In the, so he's in, in it. Preview for a TV spot for Halloween. Um, so there's that. But basically, yeah, the whole thing is like the it's whole totally different. The evolution of like how this movie was perceived is crazy. The, the precedent of how people viewed it because for so long it was like, oh, it's terrible. It's, Michael Myers isn't in it. It's not good. And there there came a point where it's like, well. Is the movie good though? <laughs> right. And the question is, we'll answer that by reviewing. Yeah. We'll, but although, we'll answer that. Although I, we'll, I do know, we'll come to a conclusion by talking about it. I do know that, that uh, Tommy Lee Wallace, who was the director and also co-writer, yeah, he said, "Guys, we can't call this Halloween three. Like you told him, we have to call it something. We can't call this Halloween three. Mm-hmm. He's like, Nah, I'd be fine. <laughs> it's like oops oopsie because I feel like it, if it was called just like season of the witch, witch or something else like that like it can't be like this has nothing to do with like the previous movies you know and like because I think if this was the original Halloween 2 mm-hmm. it would have been better because the fact that this is because three, each one is going to be self-contained you know yeah but when like make two movies two with Michael Myers with Michael Myers people expect the third one to feature Michael Myers so now it's just like wait where's Michael yeah <laughs> If you, so if I think that was their big mistake. And if you didn't like, if you bought a ticket, I, I understand it more. Yeah, because like these days, because if you bought a ticket and you're just like seeing the news, like in the news ad, Halloween three, Halloween three, season of the witch. Oh, okay, it's gonna, you know, it's the same series. John Carpenter, John Carpenter produced, produced oh, cool. it. Cool. It's like okay, it's like or just the regular movie going. Why, you know, why like, am I looking at Tom, Tom Atkins' why, bare why, ass? Why are we? Yeah, what what is this? I don't understand what's what? going on. So like. I can understand that, but like people with like let's let's focus on like how the movie is on its own. Let's, Everybody let's knows now that this is not anything to do with my like it, no, it, it's I, not new we, information. Once that's worn, it's not new information. So yeah. like when, at this point, it's like let's move on. Let's move on and f- let's let's enjoy the movie. Yeah, um, if, if you can. If you, I, I enjoy it quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you enjoy but, it. But um, so basically, the plot of the movie is um, is rev- like, this I. I it's about uh, a man who's very passionate about Halloween. <laughs> it's Kyle, Co- Kyle Cochran. Oh, who oh, uh, was like Tom Atkins? I don't think he was very the, passionate the, about Halloween. No, don't, don't you have your Halloween? Don't don't you have any Halloween spirit? No, no, no. <laughs> um, so basically, a doctor, um, Dan Chalice, played by the the wonderfully immensely sexy. wonderful, immensely sexy Tom Atkins. Um, 
<laughs> pretty much gets a patient who he's a let's let's he it's a, it's a patient who like is holding on to with a mask. death grip to a mask, yep. a silver shamrock mask. Mm-hmm. And now silver shamrock has been a, a one of the big corporate masks that have been selling like hotcakes for Halloween because they're they're three Halloween masks. The, the skull, best fucking the masks in, in the, the world. Yes, there's no other thing to be for Halloween. No, yeah, exactly. Not one other fucking thing. Not Whoa. Optimus Prime. We're not going as Robin Hood. No, fuck you. We're gonna be a pumpkin, a witch, and a fucking skeleton. Ben referring to this montage near the end of the movie where like it's Halloween night. Everybody. And everybody's dressing up as the same shit. It's like, like it's a pumpkin wearing a witch hat. It's a it's a pumpkin in a, in a Ima- ballerina outfit. Imagine if like there's a kid wearing a Spider Man costume, but just the pumpkin. It's just a pumpkin. <laughs> just like no it's matter like, what. Be sure to be home for the big giveaway at night. Oh, it's like also what what's the giveaway? And that's like there's no explain like yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like it, it doesn't explain like be sure to wear your mask when watching the giveaway why yeah, why, I mean, like, I, I, we know why we, well yeah but we in know terms but of the, like what's the draw though also it's why like, would I come back from trick or treating to watch a thing like I'd rather yeah. just go and try to steal other kids candy or, or, or break people's <laughs> windows oh god go you know, go get in a nail and pop in some tires you know Halloween Halloween goofy, shenanigans man you know, this shit people on fire you know whatever yeah um, <laughs> just, just straight up murder <laughs> no that's a horror film where like. The evil trick or treaters, where they're just fucking up your shit. Like that, that could be a good movie. That could be a good movie. Why That's has like not been d- done yet. Danger children at play, but it's, it's Halloween like, time. But it's like, oh, I mean, it's kind of just like Sam from from it trick or treat. Yeah, whatever. damn it. But it's like the invasion, of the, inv- night, invasion of the trick or treaters, where it's like, no, like, hey guys, I made this batch of candy and I spiked it with bath salts. Well, let's give it to kids. And just like the kids, that's are like just, that's like I drink your blood, where you, just, a boy infects the entire town with the rabies. Exactly. Yeah, it's like that, but we drink that. That'd be cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's cool. but so they really want to go to this this giveaway, this giveaway, the the uh, the silver shamrock giveaway I with the most annoying have... jingle of all time. I think you mean the greatest <laughs> jingle of all time. The annoying or great, depending on how you look at it, depending on who you ask. I'm kind of agnostic about it, but like. <laughs> Agnostic about I am, it. I am agnostic about the silver shamrock jingle. Listen, I'm agnostic about God and the shamrock sh- and the fucking shamrock jingle. Right? Those uh, are the only two things I'm ana- I'm fucking agnostic, dude. The fact that you said agnostic, I want to give you a big hug right now because that's the funniest <laughs> shit I think I've ever heard. I'm agnostic about the silver shamrock jingle. That has to be a t-shirt. Hell yeah! I'm gonna make that a to like really nice like jacket for you like on the back I'm it's a, agnostic I'm the silver um, jingle <laughs> but uh the guy who is like yeah. the guy who gets the you know is brought to the hospital the patient himself is a, mm-hmm. a store owner for like mm-hmm. costumes and stuff yeah he's killed by all well, because at the beginning he's chased by these like guys in suits and black gloves yeah and so then he's killed by one of them. Mm-hmm. The guy just like, is able to just sneak breaks into the hospital. Nose. Breaks his like he he he, he, he puts just destroys his, a skull. He, basically, like he puts his thumb and his index finger in both sockets and just like pinches it and lifts up the uh, the the point between mm-hmm. the two sockets and crushes yeah. that part of it and yeah. it kills him. It's a creative kill, honestly. I feel like I, he just choked him. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you could have just like snapped his neck. Um, or just, or like like just, like, just like just suffocated him or like stabbed him or whatever. Yeah, you know, but it's whatever. not cool looking. It's not cool looking. Like I said, a creative kill. And that scene, this movie has less of a, like with new eyes, you know, with mature eyes and seasoned eyes. <laughs> I Agnostic eyes? Yeah. <laughs> I can see this movie as not being really that Halloween-y, really. No. no people say it's like, oh, it's more Halloween than the original Halloween. No. It's like, no, no, no. The only thing that's Halloween about it is the fact that it takes place on, on Halloween, like leading and the up final to Halloween. montage and speech. So, yeah, and the speech and the mask, and that's it. You know, but as somebody who finds it annoying that the first Halloween film isn't Halloweeny enough for mm-hmm. my taste, this is even less Halloweeny than no the people Halloween. like people say that like I, I don't understand like the whole idea of like because well, maybe like masks this, maybe like the sense of like doom and gloom. I guess, but it's like that's not that's more like cosmic horror. That's more like apocalypse. You know, why? why? Oh, well, I, I guess the whole shamrock thing is because, you know, Irish, Irish Celtic. Yeah, Celtic stuff. It's like, it just yeah, makes it, me think of St. Patrick's Day. I'm just going to say this, though. The movie looks beautiful. Oh, my God. Dean it's, Cundy. D- Dean Cundy. This is, like, the last, like, great-looking Halloween movie, in my in my opinion. Like, that looked like this, you know? Oh, well, yeah. Objectively, it was the last movie that looked like this, yeah. you know? With the Panavision cameras. Mm-hmm. That's what those first three had in common was that, that Panavision scope, you know? Yeah. 
it just looks oh my god you know it just looks gorgeous Mwah. yeah and the shots are amazing and like this the shots of like the the the, the fucking the well, junkyard and the just, junkyard just, just every show and like the hospital scene and just like the hues are great it's got like a giallo vibe to it the hospital scene <laughs> and certain elements of it that have um kind of like a I feel like even more befitting of a synth score mm-hmm. because of just like how I mean, it makes more sense. It's very robotic. Like, oh. It's very robotic. Yeah, and mm-hmm. um, that 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 hospital scene is very giallo because he's yes. got the black gloves and he's like sneaking in to murder somebody. It's to maintain yep. a secret. It's it's classic. Um, and then the guy lights himself on fire and blows himself up in the car. Okay, I I have a very important question. Yeah. that I noticed this time. I, I didn't say anything because I was curious. Is the dad a robot? Because I say this because after he kills him, he oh, yeah, there, to the to the. By the way, the there's cr- robots in this movie. Oh right, yeah, robots or I guess cyborgs. <laughs> Please, the proper term is cy. Yeah, pre- yeah, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. But so like, he kills the dad. And he wipes his hand on like the curtain. Mm-hmm. It looks very orange juicy. It juice-ish. was red. It was definitely red. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I, I noticed like red stuff coming out of his yeah. nose and stuff. So. so basically, the robots have orange juice for blood. Yeah, no, like like actually like orange juice mix. Like mm-hmm. that's actually what it was. Uh-huh. It was just orange juice mixer. I can't imagine that was like I can't imagine. Well, it could have we could have experienced it, but whatever. Um, I, the audience reaction in the theater watching like the guy like light himself on fire with like douse himself in gasoline, light himself on fire in the car, and the car just exploding like. How that like that would play in, the, in a crowded mm. theater? Okay. Uh, people seemed very like from what I learned it from like people are reviewing it after the screen at Letterbox. People really enjoyed the movie. Yeah, it's an enjoyable little film. I, yeah, that's what, that's why I describe it. An enjoyable little film. You know, it's not as it's not, very, it's not as amazing as no. like the fog or the, the oh. script is very much undercooked. It's it's half baked. Yeah, there's a bunch of like things that like don't make sense. Tom Atkins and fucks literally everybody. Literally, in the movie. well, that's just Tom Atkins. I yeah, mean, I come mean. on. Can we talk about Tom Atkins for a second? That's in his contract. Yeah, I must have, I have to be able to have some, fuck all the women. Yes. Um, he is actually whether or not it's uh, whether or not it contributes to the movie in a positive way mm-hmm. is in the eye of the beholder. But I, I feel like there's like a sense of there's a patheticness to his his character, you know. Where yeah. he's, he's not Alcoholic. he's not Laurie Strode. He no. he's the exact. He's like he's a he's a drunk. He's like he's like he's a drinker. He is a divorced dad. He, uh, womanizer. He's a woman. Yeah, exactly. He's a womanizer. Yeah. So he's like the exact opposite of what you expect from like a hero. A hero, you know. And at the end of the day, he fails because. What the whole idea is like trying to stop, like, because his investigation, yeah. like, leads to, like, with him and the daughter of the murdered guy, leads to the discovery of Colin Cochran's plan for Sil- the guy who runs Silver Shamrock is that he puts pieces of a, of a bit of stone from Stonehenge that he stole. Metal. Puts, yeah, seriously, that's like, that's like spinal tap shit. And, uh, Puts in computer chips inside the masks. Which, by the way, that, he's doing it in a very n- not pr- 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 productive way. Yeah, there's two robots doing it. Yeah, to no, every chip, to every chip, like it's like and mass producing them. Yeah, I was like, those robots either must be very fast or they've had a lot of time to do this. Yeah, no, seriously, it's like I mean, like, dude, Carl Cochran is like the Santa Claus of he's like the Santa Halloween. Claus of Halloween. Yeah. If he's a dick. Except, yeah, exactly. He's a massive asshole. And he's like the, he's like more like the Krampus of uh, Halloween, I guess. He, he does have a great. His speech is great. Yeah, no, it's those speech. run red with the animals of blood and children. No, yeah, it's like you don't really know much about Halloween. Yeah, no, it's like Festival of Samhain. And I, I love that he picked up on this because when he says, "Oh, and Happy Halloween." It matches up with like the the Laurie Strode theme from yeah, the Halloween because it's, it's played on TV as it's like because the whole thing is like that movie's the original Halloween is playing before the big giveaway so it's like once he has once he has uh, Dan captured he, puts he a puts mask on he puts in a, in a mask and has him watch the program and then he immediately escapes yeah it's like we should have been keeping a closer eye on him but before that uh, the the daughter's taken away so she disappears from the movie for a little bit uh huh oh. And the whole thing is like, he hits her back. Okay, cool. 
and then they destroy all the robots by like putting chips by, by like playing the program in the vicinity of the of the establishment and they dump the all base, the chips and they dump all the chips and the electroshocks all of them and they kill all the robots and then Kyle Cochran turns gets zapped into by a ghost zapped by yeah Stone he turns Hinge. into a, he turns into the ghost of christmas past and he's like you have done well I, the ghost of Halloween. I, the ghost of Halloween. Summon you to the pearly gates for of Jacko your, for your orgy. Mm -hmm. or whatever. And he disappears. Um, he, well, he looks. He kind of like smirks. He like. Oh, oh, I love that. Like, he like yeah. claps. He slow claps. Gotcha, that should bitch. be a, that. that if that's not a well, gift, I, he, that's not a gift. because he knew he won. I think. No. Oh, yeah. He. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I, I won. Bitch. It's like you literally have like less than an hour to stop me. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And then, but on the, like literally, yeah, the time is of the essence, you know. Yeah. Ultimate agency. It, it, it doesn't feel like it when the when. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. So turns out at some point the doll was replaced with a robot. Yeah. And yeah, and she attacks Dan, and they, he crashes his car, and there's like there's like the whole thing where it's like okay, it's like oh she's she, dead. He thinks she's he thinks she's dead. Oh wait, no, it's like okay, she's now now she's dead. Oh no, she's back. Okay, okay, now she's dead. Oh, the arm's grabbing him. It's just like, time is of the essence, bitch. You know? Which is a joke that was done much better in... In a... Cannibal the Musical. Okay. Where, like, the, the guy gets an access, but he gets back up and, like, he shoots him. Mm. He gets back, he chops off both of his arms. He get, falls down. He, he keeps getting back up. Uh -huh. And this one, it's meant to be actually, like, scary. Yeah, no. But it's not. It doesn't work. It's like, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Yeah, no, seriously. And then he runs to the gas station. He runs to the gas station at the beginning of the movie. And he's just like... <laughs> and he just... He's just so... There's such a patheticness about it, like I said before, where he's just like, I, I don't have any proof. You just gotta believe me. It's just like, just take it off the air. The pro... And, you know, they take off the first two and channels. Those, and those three kids come in with the masks. He should have just ripped those off right yeah, away seriously. and thrown them out the window. Yeah, like fuck your masks, and it's like uh, you know, it's like happy, the the happy, happy. The, uh, the fucking thing where it's like obviously it's like the third channel's not taking it down. Yeah, the third channel, and it's like and then he goes into like the whole the stop it line. Stop it! Stop, stop it! it stop, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! And then cut to credits. Credits. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's it's cool. I like it. It's such a cool concept. Yeah, no, it could have been done better, but but for it what it is. I appreciate it. I appreciate this the, the, the coldness of it. Mm -hmm. There's so much cool thing. I you know it's like I'm I'm probably like like we said it's like kind of more of like a St. Patrick's Day movie honestly. <laughs> yeah. But cuz it it there's no like Halloween stuff besides the masks I, and the fact that yeah. it take but the way here's the thing. It's not in, it's not Halloween in terms of like set in terms of set design, but in terms of shot composition. It's like there's certain elements, like the the, yeah. the uh, there's certain shots where it's like that's Halloween to me, you know. Yeah. Where like the kids are like walking, like their silhouettes are yeah. against I mean, the that's, backdrop. That's like I mean the classic. That's one of the that's best the Halloween that's imagery. That's poster imagery, yeah. you know. Um, I, I I just I just had some fallen leaves just here and there. That would have well, really helped. The whole helped. thing. Well, that's true. They had like, but they didn't care to. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Okay, listen. The first time we did that, it was a pain in the ass. We painted leaves. We don't want to do that again. We want to make let's let's have let's just have the movie take place in California, literally, you know. But um, <laughs> and of course, because it's like Nebraska, it's, it's New still York, Cal New York. It's like the, it's the same. The interior of New York, New York, and they don't it's show just like, like a small shop. Yeah, it's a small it's, shop. It's all the, it's like the, you're gonna take our word for it. It's in New York. <laughs> we promise. We promise. Listen, we we escaped from it, and you bought that. Can you just buy this? We promise. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's just whatever. Whatever. I I still like this movie quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's my second favorite Halloween movie. Like yeah. as if there's enough really? com as if there's competition. You know. I think there's I think there's competition. A well, no. Well, I mean, it's like how? Okay, here's my thing. Okay, top three Halloween movies. Three to three to one. What's your What's for you? Favorite eighteen. Okay. Number one. Two. O G. Okay. Three, I would say Halloween, the original Halloween 2, because okay. that's the last time we got both uh, good old Donnie Pleasance and also okay. Jamie Lee in the same film. Okay. Last time they actually acted in a Halloween film together. Okay, that, that, that's that's true. That's fair. So I think those are my favorite. And then four, I guess, would have to be Halloween 3. Okay. Because I, cause like, I like Halloween 3, but like it's too flawed for me to really... Uh, like, okay. like Tom Atkins as a character, I don't give a 
fuck about it. I could give. Uh-huh. I I don't understand why he cares. Aside from the hot girl. Yeah, no, that's that's like, true. Yeah, it's like because like if he was like a cop, maybe like if like there'd be I guess more of a reason. But like, you're just like. You're just a like, hapless I, oaf, you know? Yeah, it's like, I don't understand why... There's, you have no, like, stakes in this, really, yeah. besides, like, just trying to figure out what's happening. And like, get laid. Oh, and also, there's, like, the whole thing of, like, the uh, the person at the mortuary, or, like, the uh, the uh, coroner's oh, thing. Yeah, it's like... Where it's like, can we you, can, can, the, the whole purpose is to be like, we can't figure this out. He must have sent us, like, the, the car parts or something instead of a body. I mean, that, and, that makes more sense, because at that point, you don't know the robots. Well, yeah, no, exactly. But, like, the realization is, like, not very well like conveyed done. where it's not, or like, it's not really well done you know? where it's like she looks like oh wait a minute and oh wait drill. a minute and then she's dead she's drilled because she's like drill killed because she had like a big pile of scraps and she found like like a like a robotic finger in there or something yeah yeah, yeah. like if, if she found like, she's like looks at it for like a few more seconds just like oh my god yeah huh that's odd. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it, it's like i i love the ideas i I love when fantasy and science fiction are mixed. Yeah, that's really what this movie is. It's a mixture of science fiction and fantasy. Yeah, it's just and, like the yeah. characters suck. It's I like the mixture of the occult yeah, no, and that's the part, computer that, age. Yeah, that's great. It's it's just Tom Atkins, like all... The only reason I enjoy Tom Atkins is because I, I made a lot of jokes about him getting laid. That's yeah. the only, like, Tom Atkins can fuck literally anything. Yeah, seriously. Like he can fuck a car and he gets pregnant. <laughs> or like, because like... You know what's like a... He well, walks in the, with the girls like... Want to fuck? <laughs> and then they fuck. She's like, oh, yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. what was, I thought... Are you of age? <laughs> after he has yeah, sex with her? Yeah, he asked her, like, after, like... He, like sex. Yeah, after they have sex, they, he one-ups, what's your name, with... Oh, by the way, are, are you legal? No, no, he has to, how old are you? How old are you? Yeah, like, how old are you? Unfortunate, sir. Yeah, come on, man. Um, oh, man. I, I realized just now, a good double feature to pair up with uh, Halloween 3. Uh, Is it The Fog? No, 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 no not The Fog. Evil Speak. I don't know what that is. It's got Clint Howard, and it's um, about this kid, at, this bullied kid at like a army cadet training camp. Okay. And he finds a computer that harbor that like basically he hooks up like this computer to, like satanic shit, and it causes like the Satan to come alive through the computer. Yeah. And it's super cool. I, I'm, okay. I'll, I'll pair that up with this, you know. Okay. Because it's about like kind of that stuff where it's like. Uh, the supernatural is entering the, the computer age, you know, right. in okay. that 80s, like kind of outdated way, but it's cool, you know, I like it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't know what I would, I think, I don't know. This one was very weird for me because this okay. is the first time I've ever seen it. Like I've never mm-hmm. seen it in full before. Yeah. And I guess I was just expecting more because I've heard like, oh dude, it's the best Halloween film aside from the original. It's like, it's not. No, it's objectively just not. Well, it's like it's it's the, not the, it's the not it's is, not the it's characters. Not, are it's so not like it's like oh, it's up there with the original. No, 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 it's not. It's not. But I'm saying like people say it's like it's second best. It's like I don't think so. Okay, I I, I agree with well, that you, sentiment. I like it. it's my second favorite Halloween movie. Yeah, yeah. but it's just like the script is so. It's think, all over the place. Yeah. I think I think I think Halloween like the original Halloween two had a better script. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, because like I mean obviously it's stupid like the whole yeah, but it it, it has motivation. It's mm. like like if someone asked me what is Tom Atkins' character's motivation. You wouldn't be able, to, yeah. Hoon, it, it's I, it's I, one of his weaker characters, honestly. I know people have made action I think it, I think it is his weakest character. I think objectively. No, yeah, no. There's like because there's different. There's like you know the, the asshole dad in creep show. There's Nick Castle in the fog. Yeah. There's um the, the cop in Night of the Creep. That's his best performance. Well, like his well, best like role, I believe. But there's even a scene. I I I I'm not sure if they shot it. I don't think they did based on what I've seen. But like. Because he's at the bar and the girl comes in and is like, "Oh, thanks for coming to my dad's funeral. Can we see that?" Like, oh, really? Yeah, because she's a. Thank you for coming to my dad's funeral. That's very huh. nice of you. It, it would show like he cares about his patients to go to their funeral. I, I didn't catch that line. Wow. Yeah, it's like, oh, I would have liked that more than just I'm gonna I'm gonna slap this nurse's ass. Yeah. It's like yeah. Sh- showing that he cares, even though he's kind of a dick, mm-hmm, would mm-hmm. go a long way for him to be like. A more likable character. Yeah. Like, just like, like, because, like, in my head, he only goes to have sex with the guy's daughter. Like, I don't know <laughs> yeah, why, why else would he go. Like, I like, think he just wants, I, 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 there's no, there's no real reason. Yeah, that's, for it. to me, that's, that's the biggest flaw. Do I, hey, do I need a reason? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's pretty. No, 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 no,
if he was like a cop, that would make more sense because he yeah. solved, solved the case. Solved the case, yeah. But he's just like, I'm it, a doctor it, it, who's it's an just, alcoholic. And there needs to be like, it's just an excuse to like, why he's a doctor? I don't, if you were a cop, it, he would have more of that instinct to solve. investigate and it's solve like, it. You the know? case is closed, Officer Simmons. Stop trying to dig in things that doesn't belong. What do you think of this in comparison to like something like, in terms of like the comparisons between this and Invasion of the Body Snatchers? In terms of, like, the original, original film. Oh, um, hmm. I think the original's better. Than oh, the, oh, yeah, the, the fucking I mean, I mean, the is great. Yeah. I get it, but there's not much body swapping except for the daughter. Like, there's no, there's no other, like... I think it's not so much that, but also just the idea of, like, they look like people. Oh, then. But they're, you know, they're it's not, not even close to body. Like, oh, no, no. But, like, in terms of, like, what do you think of those comparisons where it's, like, Makes in sense. terms of, like, it was inspired? Because yeah. the movie itself feels like an hour and a half... It feels like a feature length hour limits episode, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I was just kind of disappointed with it, if yeah. I'm being honest. Like, I was expecting something more like. Okay. When did she turn into a robot? Because we, we, I think we when she was this. taken away. I think because I, I think it was when she was taken away by the guards or like the, the robots. Oh, because there's my evidence I, I put out to you about. During after their sex scene, mm-hmm. she wants to have sex with him again because he's Tom Atkins, and he's like eight times. Aren't you tired? And she's like, no. I, I st- that got me thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe he never had a daughter. Maybe like the daughter was brought into like mm. to like put off suspicion that like hey, I don't know. And then like, yeah. And and then they brought Tom Atkins over because the main head want to have sex with him or something. I don't know. But my theory doesn't make much sense either because like, why would she just stand by idly while he destroys everything? You know? Yeah. Well, I, I it's, it's, it's a, it's the worst, it, like it's a big plot hole in the movie. It, it, there's, yeah, there's, it, there's no getting around it. It's, it's so, I want to like this more than I do. I really do. There's mm-hmm. stuff I really like about it. I, I just personally, I, I, it's, for me, it's like the final Sephiroth situation. situation. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's the final Sephiroth situation. Well, there's great shots though in the movie, you know? Good there's like, there's great eye candy for yeah. me. Yeah. But I think like, to me, it's the same with final Sephiroth. Just watch the ending. Mm-hmm. Like, like with this, watch like his speech onward. Okay, that that makes more sense. Okay, mm-hmm. fair enough. Just make a great short film if they just had that. Yeah. Like, but like, all like them investigating, I didn't care about. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna call this person on the. It's just like in FNAF with like with the dream where it's like he calls the nurse like several like three times. That's true. It's yeah. Like, it's like we gotta save money. We gotta film in this one location. It's the mm-hmm. same spot. Yeah. The, the the things don't even move on her desk. Yeah. Where it's like. And it's supposed to be separated by days, so yeah. It's like it's like she's wearing the same outfit. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. I just like also like the mystery isn't that intriguing. No, it's I mean I, well first of all I know what the mystery is. So it's, yeah, so therefore what, like by it's, it's by hard reason to, of like not by like reason of like oh I I know what happens because I've been told you know yeah but like the, there's a whole thing of like paranoia they're trying to do but like I didn't feel paranoid mm-hmm. at all. It's like there's there's cameras everywhere. But it's like also I don't find the the like the evil white robot men very scary mm. they're just like white guys oh and the one the one um robot is played by yep. dick warlock who played michael myers in halloween too who can we both agree that like, that is the greatest name in the history it of is it's like, such dick a, it's warlock great, sounds dick like a warlock superhero. is the greatest name of all time yeah cock warlock you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah what yeah. would you give halloween three i gotta remind myself what i gave it you gave it two and a half i believe uh, that sounds about right. I just want to make sure because I, I, yeah, two and a half. I feel like that's fair. Okay. Like I, I enjoyed myself. It was fine. Okay. It was, eh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I give it a three and a half. Okay. Just because it's just like it's one of those things. I'm, I'm I an aristocrat. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy it. It's like it's one of those things where it's like it's kind of like finance a phrase with us, but switched. You know? Yeah. Where it's like I it's it's, it. it's it's a mediocre kind of movie, but like I just like it. I, I like it. Yeah. But also, it's just. I mean, I, I it's actually, just a beautiful movie. I, it's a beautiful looking movie. Yeah. Like Dean Cundey. Like Dean he, Cundey he was made all the master. Groups. You know of of looking. Ha- the the Halloween's it, the fog. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The Thing, Jurassic Park, Jack and Jill, all the classics. All, that's that, that's never not funny. Just, it's so weird that that was it. That was his last movie. The Swan Song. That was the last movie he worked on. That's crazy. You know Is he dead? 
No, 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 no. no. He's just we need retired. to bring him back for like one great, just maybe like a Halloween short film or something. I don't know. No, no. We, we need to bring him back for like the, the get John Carver to make one last film and like just get the no, boys back that, together. That, that's that's. Over. I know it's not gonna happen, but it's not gonna happen. A, a man can dream, can I? Yeah. All right. So our last film of this Halloween extravaganza mm-hmm. is. Uh, what has it been? What has it been? Human Centipede 2. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, yeah. It's Wendell and Wild, directed by Henry Selick. That's not how his name pronounced. Oh, I was just like, oh, am I pronouncing it wrong no, this whole no, time? No, 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 it's Selick. <laughs> but this film has a very convoluted plot, a little bit. Well, mm-hmm. well, I would say so. Yeah, so the basic premise is a girl named Kat uh, loses her parents in a bridge accident. Mm-hmm. And then she goes to prison for other stuff. Or, uh, not, not prison. Juvenile but, detention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so she comes back to her old hometown, and her parents owned a big brewery in the town, but it mysteriously burned down. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah. yeah. So she sees that her town has now gone to shit, because apparently everyone was was all, were all employed by the same yeah, brewing like, company. Like, well, it's kind of, she said it was a domino effect. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess, but... So, so she's um, she goes back to a, to a Catholic girls prep school. Mm-hmm. I guess um, she meets um, Sister Helly, mm-hmm. who's a lady priest who also has like powers, mm-hmm. and uh, James Hong as 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 good old Father Bests. Yes, who's a dick a little bit, kind of a dick. Mm-hmm. Um. But she gains the attention of two demons named Wendell and Wilde, played by Key and Peele themselves. Yeah. And um, they want to dream, and their dream is to make their own theme park. However, they're currently enslaved by their father to uh, to uh, put hair implants into him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they found out that uh, the magic cr- hair cream gets you high. Yeah, no, it's literally weed. It's just weed. Yeah, but white goo. And then... um. So they contact Kat and say, hey, if you bring us to the land of the living, we'll bring your dead parents back to life. Mm-hmm. Uh, conference. Uh, we can't do that. Well, we do, we do know how to lie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that plan. <laughs> I love Wendell Wilde in the film. They're, oh, they're, they're probably they're my favorite great. parts. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're fun, actually yeah. fun to watch. Because it's just like the fact that's Key and Peele. You know? Yeah, it's just Key and Peele being Key and Peele. And when, when does this come out? Like what year? 2022. So that oh my god because that so that means like this well is the last past, time they ever worked together. That was like I yeah I, I figured like I was just like if this if this is post COVID like this is like the last time they ever worked together. Actually, hmm, hmm, hmm. only animation was done during COVID. Oh wow, really? No, I do pain. like and I also like, during forest fires around the studio too. Oh wow, really? Oh yeah. Like, well, sure. we gotta animate this while COVID and also during in a fire. So, yeah, but anyway, um, basically, so the. So she brings up the demons, however, they're separated due to a really funny gag where, like, this rock falls in and they yeah. changes their path. That's funny. Totally like on that. accident. Yeah. So they bring back Father Bests, who's in league with the Claxons, including mm-hmm. Black Trump. Yeah. We got his Black Trump is in this movie. It sounds like the most powerful creature ever devised by man. <laughs> Imagine Trump, but black. He could rule the world. Um <laughs> Well, it, well, it's not. Yeah, but he looks yeah. like Trump. He's like it's he's, subtle. He looks like Trump. It's oh, very subtle. This film, the mayor of this of of this town is named. Uh, I think it, it's Mayor R- Bribes. Bribes. Awesome. Yeah. But so basically, they say, okay, we can't get the votes to get our new prison system into this town. However, if we go and bring back the old old council from the dead. They'll bring it back. So they hired Wenon Wild to bring back these council members so they can get their prison in mm-hmm. however they say don't bring anyone else back from the dead because they started the, the the brewery fire until they get eyewitnesses yeah back from the dead so basically it's when and while trying to like trying to ignore her request he, 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 he feel kind of bad about it yeah and then she makes a deal with them which gets them introduced to the wheelchair guy yeah who's a demon hunter who is with heli and so he wants Kat to be his apprentice, kind of, but not really. And so they they go back into her past, and then and then when and then Raul the trans kid brings back Kat's parents, 
you know, Ren and Wild didn't want him to. So Kat meets her parents again, and her parents say, go help your friend Raul. And so he, she goes, and then Father Best and Ren and Wild kidnap the, um, the parents because <laughs> that goes against their contract with the Claxons. However, they're stopped immediately after Kat is after Cat and Heli go through their whole seance to get her out of their their bond, and then they find and then Wind and Wild and uh, uh, Father Best learn that the money they got were was Joker money, which just has their face on it, <laughs> and, and then and then the father of Wind and Wild uh, Belzer comes up from hell to get revenge, and then he becomes a good dad all of a sudden when he sees a painting, and then and then they go all become protesters to go against uh, uh, the bulldozers run by uh, skeletons. And then, however, they find out that the cream doesn't work forever. So that means that Kat's parents are going to die again. However, the last of the cream is used to bring back eyewitnesses to get the Klaxons in jail. Um, and then... The more we talk about the let plot... Let me finish. The I'm more, almost done. The more you explain the plot, it just makes the movie worse for me. Okay, and then... And so they, they have the big showdown between the bulldozers. For some reason, they brought three bulldozers to take down an entire town. <laughs> um, so they're fighting them with, like, toilet paper and rocks um, and beetles that they throw at them. And then they stop them. And then Kat's parents dies again. She's chosen the future. Uh, and then Wendell and Wild show their cool uh, paper mache thing. And then the movie ends. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's the plot. <laughs> that the the theme of this Halloween episode is half baked ideas. Yeah, a little bit. And, and not well. Here's the th- here's the, the the three the three sins of this Halloween episode. Okay. Okay. Half baked ideas, which is Halloween three. You know, uh, the ro- the wrong idea, Five Nights at Freddy's, and too many ideas. Wendell and Wild. And then, then there's the good one. There's the good one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Wendell and Wild is, uh, again, Hike Five Nights at Freddy's had a long history of production because mm-hmm. uh, the good old uh, Henry Selleck wrote the story a long time ago and then when he was feeling down, because after Coraline, he worked for Disney to make mm-hmm. like a new animation thing for Pixar yeah. with stop motion, but that fell through because, you know, Fuck John Lasseter. Yeah. Um, so he was depressed after that fell through, and then he watched Key and Peele. He he got a meeting with Key. I'm sorry, not Key, with Peele. And this uh-huh. was this was like before Get Out. Yeah. Like, like the script was still being written, and Peele was like, "Listen, I want to help you write it. I have ideas on how we can make the film different." So they worked on the script a lot, and then after Get Out, I gave them like enough clout to say, "Hey, mm-hmm. Key and Peele are, are back together." It's written by Jordan Peele, who got an Oscar. Come on. Yeah, no, it's come like, come man. on. So they got it. It was mediocre. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the, my big problem is the Claxons. Because mm. the whole idea is that they're making a, a very not-so-subtle jab at the prison system. Yeah, no, it's very... Un, it's it's very, literally it's so... Uh, it's like, and there's, the strep say, like, what, what the privatized prison yeah. system is. Which is, you know, know it's, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. But I think a way to do that without taking, without convoluting more is make Belzer the the idea of the prison system. Like the Buffalo. Because yeah. when you see Wendell Wild, they're wearing like striped prison. Yeah. Why not have Buffalo, make him the antagonist, b- the big demon Buffalo Belzer. I, for Why? the longest time, for watching most of this movie, I didn't know who the, like who the antagonist, like who the real, like the big antagonist it's was. Black Trump. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like I, there were so many like different like villain like setups for me. There's the wheelchair guy. Yeah. There's there's Black there's Trump James and Hong, his crazy there's wife. There's Black Trump, his wife, Buffalo Bills the, are. Yeah, exactly. And it's like it's too because my because on on the reviews from a Bionic Pig. You watch Bionic Pig? No. He he does like quick little like I watch a movie and I I talk about it mm-hmm. and I, I I have to comment there saying. One way they should have done it is how by having either have Pun and Wild be just the antagonists uh-huh. or having them both represent different aspects of her trauma. Yeah. And having her befriend them is her overcoming mm-hmm. her trauma. Kind yeah. of. But in the film it's just like, all right, uh, let's cut our hands and go trip out in a room for a little bit and now you're fine. This doesn't seem relevant, but oh, no. I promise it is. 
How long is Pinocchio? Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. It's, it's like, longer. Well, yeah, but like how... It, it is two hours. Two, hour, around it, two it, hours? No, it is exactly two well, hours. Well, exactly two hours. Basically. This like, is, it, what, an hour and 50? An hour and mm-hmm. 51? It feels longer? No, no, no. It feels so rushed. Yeah. In so, so many ways. There's yeah. too much stuff going on. There's like, the pacing is awful in, in yep. some areas, you know? Yeah. And I just, 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 it came to a point where I was just like, I was just like, oh, this we, is we literally, I was, like, I, I was like, oh, this is good. And I was like, oh, this we, is not, we, what, what? We literally, as like, I mean, because yeah, the main character, you know, killed a kid. And you're like, wait, she killed a kid? Yeah, yeah. the part, did you see that? No. And we had to really go back yeah. and rewatch the part where it talks about her backstory. Because like, no, to be fair, we were discussing the film right. when it was happening. But the fact that. It's telling us this so close to the How end of the film. How do you know, like, it was... I think she just injured him, right? I mean, like, I mean, you can't say, like, for certain, but the fact she went to, like... Cause, like well, it shows no, her, because like, she, like, like, she injured him, though. That's enough to, like, send it? somebody, you know? I mean... It, I, I, it she doesn't assaulted matter. him, you know? Uh, to me, it, it makes more it more heartbreaking if she actually killed him. That would be... That, for me, like, that's overkill. There's, there's a lot of death in this movie. That's true. Father yeah. Beskitt's his head. Well, I mean, it's like, I, I did, like, that, Again, then you should be thinking about that, too, where it's just like, yeah. well, it's just showing her becoming know. a bad seed, basically, a bad egg, you know? Yeah, a very unlikable egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I, I get, I think, you know. She's fine as a protagonist. She's fine, I yeah. guess, whatever. It's, it's just. But if it's fine, is not really what we're looking for. <laughs> no, we're looking for good. Yeah. And, and like, because there's a big complaint where, like, Wendell and Wild are not. Like really a focus. Mm-hmm. They're just like side characters. That's tr- the the title of characters in the movie are not like it's like what I mean. Yeah. They're important because they they basically set the plot it's in motion the with plot the cream. Motion, yeah, but like like the like the Claxons have more mm-hmm. importance than Wendell and Wild. I don't know. To me, it, it should have been more focused on the demons because like like the whole Claxon Corp stuff was just like, mm-hmm. hey, hey, did you know that? Uh, Trump is bad and also prisons are bad? Did you know this? I think we know this. Did you know this, kids? Kids, uh-huh. did you know that black Trump is bad? Black Trump. Hey. I can't get over black. That was my letterbox review. Yeah, just black Trump. Because, like, it, it's it's like, to me, I mean, it's funny, but, like. It's like, why, could like you, what were you trying to do? Like, It's like, I, I get it, I guess. I, it's, it's so confusing because it's like, yeah, it's are like, you, where, so you're saying, like, Trump, you're obviously saying Trump is bad. But like, but why black. is he black? Because it's funny. <laughs> it's like I'm so confused what the intent was, what the full yeah. intent was. And it's like I don't. I feel like I feel like this is obviously I haven't read any of the drafts, so I'm just. Mm-hmm. I think Jordan Peele came in and made it way too political, or like in terms of like way too like like I, I have a feeling that the Claxton stuff was not in the original pitch. Mm, okay, all that stuff like that feels very much like. Trying to pull it, which is not bad, like, uh-huh. but like a little more subtlety, yeah. And like the fact that we were more interested in the fact that it's Black Trump than the plot, yeah. No, it was just, I was just, I was just, I was just, I was just baffled by that. I was just like, that's so funny to me. Yeah, and like Raul is probably the best character in the film because mm-hmm. like he's not a, a dick. Yeah, and like, he's just like a nice guy. And that's that's pretty cool, including like a trans you know character. Yeah, in your and, film. It's, and it's like not. It's, it's, it's not, not like, it's not like, it's not like, look, it's a trans character. Yeah, no, it's not like, it doesn't feel exploitive. Yeah, it's, it's just, just like, like, oh yeah, he's just he's there, trans. You know? he's, yeah, he's trans, whatever. okay, you know. Moving yeah. on, yeah. Keen Peel. Um, yeah, and then like, also, there's some pretty, pretty bad voice acting. Okay, yeah. From her, from, especially the dad. Yeah. Like, the first lines of dialogue in the film make me cringe. It's mm-hmm. like, I told you, no prisons, just beer. <laughs> it's like... Like what? And uh-huh. like, hey, hey, sweetie, how's it going? Like, oh yeah. Like, what, emote, what you, you son of a bitch. Emote. God damn. Like, uh-huh. it's like he's drowning. It's like, oh man, we're drowning. Like, yeah. Like, I don't like. What? It's just it's just, it's not impactful. It's not impactful. Well, it was impactful for the, because I remember we were watching it and like when he crashed the car, you were like, you you went, oh. Well, no, but in terms of like, I just I didn't feel anything. Watch this movie. Yeah, no. It's like the character was like, oh man, that's. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the frame, like the parts where it's like supposed to be in like slow motion, but the they just drop the frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. It's um, yeah, it's it's, tr- it's frustrating because you can tell a lot of work went into. It's the movie. a gorgeous. I love the character, but design. like why watch like, this? Almost. Why watch this when I can watch like Nightmare Before Christmas? When I can watch Coraline? Coraline when I can watch Paranorman? You know, I I uh, one thing that bothered me. I don't know. It's probably just me. Really upset me because when we first meet Wonder Wild. They have flat faces, mm-hmm. like, like their face are almost like, almost like flat. Okay. And then when they start to go to the surface, yeah, the character design change. They're, I, then it's never brought up. Nope. I'm so confused about that because I think the idea is that they're they made themselves look more human. Okay. But like, why I'm not just, say that? Yeah. Because like, because because I like the flat faces more. Yeah, me too. It's more like personality and like it make them stand out more against the normal looking humans. Exactly. But it's just like, eh. Everybody's exaggerated somewhat anyway, so like why not go for it, you know? Yeah. Because I... Because it's never brought up like what are you trying to fool people into thinking you're human? No. You yeah, know? it's like you have tails and you fly. It's yeah, like, seriously. You're it's purple. Like, I don't know why that design changed. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I mean, maybe they started animating the, the original face like this, this shit sucks even more than the regular head so they just changed it. <laughs> I would not be yeah. shocked if that was the reason, but mm-hmm. yeah, it, it was like there was so much they could do, and like I, th- I feel like when and Wild were not connected to Cat enough because they she had that weird giant memory demon. Yeah, it's like, that was. I, I, th- okay. I thought her, them being her personal demons was about like confronting when and Wild or like overcoming. Yeah, no, them. that would have made more sense. But like that's just like oh the deal's the deal's broken because I overcame my. My demons, my while I, I tripped out well, in this room. And I became friends with my demons. Like, well, what's... Because I think the idea is that she, she accepted them and like, yeah. she's not like... Oh, I guess so. But like, why not involve them in that if they're her personal demons, right? Yeah, it's like, like if when... It's like, its own separate thing. Like, because it's like... So... It, because Wendell like hated himself all the time and if Wilde was like making rash choices all the time. Yeah. And like... Those are the, if her they're, two. If they're like distinct per- characteristic traits of her, but separated. Yeah. yeah, and then like her either befriending them or defeating them. That would work. <laughs> that's, that's called a plot. That's called a plot. But it's like no, we have to have a scene where we're all with protesting signs and we're you know attacking the the the, the, the bulldozers and. This was very underwhelming. I'm gonna be completely honest. That's with why you. I chose it. <laughs> because because we need more film. We can't talk about great films, but we need to talk about some stinkers here and there. We're talk about some stinkers for the Halloween episode. <laughs> no, you're good. But I want to, I want to, I want to discuss something I've always wanted to do here okay. on the podcast. I want to go through, quickly go through the three or three previous films: uh, FNAF, uh, Halloween Three, and this one. They're all kind of like mediocre to bad. Okay. I want. How would you make them better? Okay, for Halloween Three. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's, let's let's see Halloween Three alone for a second. Um, go FNAF. Like go FNAF. I would make it so that it was more of a survival horror, like mm-hmm. you know, like the game itself. Mm-hmm. I would make it so that each night was a struggle to survive, mm-hmm. and each night you know he goes through the motions and like, but he learns more as he as it progresses because the nights don't mean anything. You know, he's not trying to survive or anything. He's not trying to use different tactics. He sleeps. It, yeah, he just sleeps. It's like okay, sure. And it's like. It's not. It's not scary at all. Nope. It would. My idea would like it had more tension to it if it were closer to the game. Mm-hmm. But like then he finds out about the whole thing of spring trap and that becomes the climax. You well, know. Here, here's something I thought would be cool is that so for years the theory with the purple guy was that he's phone guy, mm. like they're the same character. Uh-huh. In this film, he is. Yeah. He calls him. Is like he has the same dialogue as phone guy. So I thought each night he gets a call from Steve Raglan or phone guy or purple guy. Yeah. And then at the end, you figure out, oh, he's purple guy. Then you have the whole being yeah. killed by animatronics thing. Uh huh. So like, it, which means we have or maybe we have more each, maybe Lillard. each call can have a piece of the mystery. Yes. Fit it. Yeah. And, and then of course, a we'll get more Matthew Lillard. Yeah, exactly. Always great. Yeah. We can have him like maybe maybe instead of the cop, he'll stop by and check up on you. Check up on him. It's like, yeah. hey, how you doing? I'm not suspicious at all. Uh huh. And then at the end, you find, oh shit, he's trying to sacrifice you to the. Yeah, so mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, you know that's that would make it better. Yeah. All right. In terms of Wendell and Wild, I would just add like add less shit, you know. <laughs> and like you said, like you mentioned, like make the demons more extensions of Cat, you know. Yeah. Um, make it more so that like they're they're they have distinct characteristics of different. 
there are both representations of different kind of personality traits that she has that she has to bow but comes to terms with and like and come to an agreement with you know yeah and also have have it, 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 you're gonna have like the whole prison system thing have it be Belzer, but Buffalo Belzer. Yeah, be have him be the personification of that. Yeah, because like he's torturing people on his on his circus. Yeah. like and then he's like, oh, oh, but now I'm is, a good dad. I'm a god. I'm a good dad because I saw a painting. Yeah, he's like, oh, a parent defending their child. This I was, lost my children once. This was, and then they bring it's like, hey, I went back to the school and back in ten seconds, and here are your kids. You want your kids back? <laughs> it's Donnie Blinko and Gabby Gabby. It's like, oh. And well, the whole the, the whole thing of like they could have found out like through some accident like the bug the bug like dies you know it's like oh no it doesn't last forever and then it's like yeah. then make it a race against the clock you know yeah and or like even the little thing with the fire like have the mm-hmm. don't have that be a conspiracy just have that be a terrible accident yeah that's sadder yeah it's like everything seems to be down and everything sucks yeah yeah yeah. And Halloween three. Halloween. Halloween three. What I would fix would be have a more likable protagonist. Some of the, <laughs> yeah. uh, have a more likable protagonist. Maybe a younger protagonist. Younger protagonist. Make him a cop. Make him something like or that. A gives, PI. Or make, just give there a reason for him to investigate. News reporter. News. Yeah. No. Journalist. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's a big. That would be a big fix. <laughs> yep. Um, make the um. Make it so that it feels more expansive. Make it feel more like, make it feel more deserving of the apocalyptic vibe it's going for by like making a more plausible mm. idea, plan oh. of how to end the world on Halloween. Because <laughs> we didn't mention this, but we talked about it when we were watching the movie. Really, only America celebrates. Yeah, I was Halloween. about to make it. It's like Halloween's so, an American holiday. So like only kids in America go out trick or treating. So like he's like says the world's going to change tonight. America's gonna America's change. gonna change because a lot of people are gonna die. But the the way they the way they say it, it may, it comes off like the film itself believes that like in the characters believe everybody's that separate. everybody's gonna die. It's, it's like, like no, not I mean, America. a lot of people will die, but like n- like not the entire world. So like make yeah. it like or maybe like have it be like have it when be, it activates tonight, Stonehenge itself will unleash yeah. an evil. It'll destroy the make world. Make it like yeah, Stonehenge or something. Involve Stonehenge more. You know. Yeah. Or, like or, just, I don't know. Every dead person will fucking explode. <laughs> yeah, no. Or like, yeah, it's just like because it's crazy. It, it wants you to feel apocalyptic, but it like it doesn't feel. Apocalyptic. Doesn't feel no. It, it, it should. It needs to. Or just like have it be realistic and just be like, we'll just kill a bunch of people. Yeah, you know? just like just a sacrifice. It will still. It will still be the, the, the a higher kids. body count than Michael Myers. Yeah. So like you know, yeah, it just feels like. We need around a million kids to satisfy the demon. Yeah, no, it's just like, oh, a bunch of... He's just like, everybody watching will die. You know, it's like everybody watching... We need to stop global warming by sacrificing kids. Yeah. Or something, just anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how I would fix Halloween 3. All all three of those movies, Also, we need Michael Myers on. (laughs) At least a cameo. And also, the ultimate way I would fix Halloween 3 is I would put Michael Myers in there. I would I would get rid of the script and just make it Halloween 4. <laughs> but just put a, put, put a free in front of it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No. But, but yeah. That, that was it. So uh, what's, let's talk about Halloween itself. A oh, little bit. Hold, hold oh, on. My God. Ratings, ratings. Two and a half for two. Wendell Wild. Oh, I gave it a two. Okay. But with a heart. Because I because yeah. I enjoyed it more this time than I did. Okay. The first time yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. but now it's like, oh, it's pretty. I like the music, uh huh, and the punk music's cool. A lot mm-hmm. of Afro punk. Yeah, a lot of Afro punk. Yeah. And there's a there's that great scene when the when a Pelzer comes up from the ground, like, look in my eyes, what do you see? It's like mm-hmm. the cult of person. It's like V five full five. That was I smell the blood of two thieving bums. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I like that's being Rams. So yeah, <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> My protecting a child. It's just sound like bubbles from Leland's. Uh huh. Also, so what like, were you we gonna I, say though? Also, after like, I really wanted Arby's for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> we have the, the meats. Who? <laughs> I never, I never had Arby's. Have you? Arby's is fine. They got their curly fries are really good. Okay. So. And their cheese, their cheese sauce is good. Okay, but, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping Henry Selleck makes more movies. I mean, too. This can't too. be his last film. No, no. This was disappointment. Yeah. This was like nothing because I feel like because Nightmare on Elm, Ni- Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare Before Christmas was <laughs> Nightmare great. Nightmare on Elm Street Before Christmas. Honestly, like, what what would you think of like a short where it's like, um, 
where Freddy Krueger traps a kid in like a claymation world or something, That'd be and dope. like stop motion Freddy Krueger cool. or whatever. I'm no. But um, <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas was. I mean, he kind of did that in the third. In one. the third one, yeah. yeah so. Where's the puppet? Yeah. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas was great. One of the greatest. Coraline was even better, in my opinion. That's hard. That's a hard choice for me. I love Coraline. Coraline is pretty dope. Yeah. Have you seen that James and the Giant Peach? I I grew up watching that, man. It's, I it's, mean, it's the Goth fine. Spider's hot. I actually... Th- <laughs> <laughs> that's so. That's so you to say. Listen, so it's, you're thinking what I, you're saying. What everybody's thinking, though. Well, the, uh, first of all, I don't actually find her, ch- but like everyone online, every time someone mentions it, like on Twitter, like, "Hey, it's the t- 18th anniversary of Jane." It's like, dude, I want to fuck that spider. <laughs> that spider's so fucking hot. It's like, oh my god. Okay. Relax, yeah. I mean, I, goth is hot. Like, everyone knows Isn't this. she like French or something? Or I like, think so. Okay. And like, she's also kind of banging that that one that Popeye one, the caterpillar like, guy. Yeah, the Popeye the knockoff. Yeah. 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 But I'm hoping because because he got the rights back to his canceled film mm. from Disney, so I'm hoping he makes that next. Oh yeah, what's that called? Uh, the Shadow Prince or Shadow King. Okay. Shadow King. Where, like, basically, it's like Dumbo, but it's meant to be like hand puppets. Okay. Because, like, it's this kid with, like, super long finger, Like, th- like the fingers go out to here. Uh-huh. Like, he has to, like, bite them and, like, bend them like they're clay to make hands. It's, like... Huh. There's, like, a short clip of it online. Like, okay. short. But it's, like, so weird. I mean, it's cool looking. It's weird. Yeah. But, like... It's, like... Because he, like, he, he like, unleashes demons or something. Like, uh-huh. shadow demons or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's... It, it looked more interesting than Wendell and Wild. Yeah, no, seriously. Wendell and Wild, I remember being very because like years like Wendell and Wild coming soon from like, mm. the director of Henry Selick, and it's like oh, okay, yeah, he's pretty. Yeah, I, I love the character designs aside from aside from the the daughter of Black Trump. <laughs> yeah. He looked like weird. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a but like. I, of the main character's design, cat mm. with the big green poof balls and yeah. the the punk boots. Oh yeah, that's a great design. Yeah. I like I like Wendell Wild's flat face designs. Mm. I like the Buffalo Belzer's asshole we see in, the, in the, when we because he eats like a bunch of ghosts and like we see him go through his ass. Real, that's I, his actual. That, I, that was what he was, it was implying. Okay, no, no, right. no, no. You see them coming out of his like his asshole. Like actually, I missed that. I, I no, missed... well, because like, here's the thing. I paused it very carefully to make sure it was the asshole. Oh, very. I studied it carefully, <laughs> but like, no, you see him like in the one like his asshole clenches and the ghost come. I'm not kidding. That's in the movie. Yes, that's the opening scene. Well, I know they like go through like the the, the like no, the colon see, like thing. Like, the asshole. That can't be true, dude. We're, 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 I'm gonna open that. We're back watch up. it again. Yeah, I, I gotta make sure I'm, I'm, I'm not bullshit again. No, okay. no, fuck, <laughs> <you're> <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. I, I promise you, mm-hmm. the asshole of, of I'll, I'll take your word of Ving Rhames is in this film. I'll take your word for it. But um, yeah, Wendell Wild. <laughs> so that makes it this in Pulp Fiction. Oh, <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> Poor Rick. But, yeah. Any, any other? Uh, so, yeah. That any other things to say about Wendell Wild? It's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's nice looking sometimes. I like the music a lot. I, there's one shot in it that I really like. It's like the um, it's kind of like a nightmare sequence where like there's the the red the police lights flashing. Oh yeah, it. and it comes that, it comes that for me was a missed opportunity because that's the horror that's like a horror movie element for like mm-hmm. just the entire black community in general, right? right? Just like the fear of the police, you know? Yeah, and well, and the cop does become one of the Yeah, but I feel like it doesn't linger on. Also, I, here's a funny fact. So on Twitter, back when it was still Twitter, uh-huh. I got into a conversation with a designer from the film. Like it really? Was a concept. Because so I was like, are the Nightmare Head Wendell Wilds a reference to Star Fox? Because in Star Fox, there's like the, the floating heads yeah. in space. Okay. And like we got into a whole conversation about it. Wow. He's like, I don't think so because the guy who designed it is like a French guy. I don't think he really gets video games. Like, I, I, like, I mean, that's fair because I post some pictures of like of the bad guy from Star Fox. Like, it, just like the floating head in hands like – Really, my we got to know a whole thing about nice. it. Nice. So I don't think, but like the first, I was like, "Is that Star Fox?" Because <laughs> um, I love that dream sequence. The just the the animation of their hands and just yeah, yeah like, it, it's such well well done animation. It's just the script was kind of bad. Yeah, no, and some of the like some of like the post effects were not great no, at the all. Frame rate. <laughs> oh God. And like, there's a scene where the, there's the scene transition where it's like white just smears. Oh, like, it was so bad. Like, why not yeah. just a fade? 
Yeah, no, or, seriously. Or just a regular old wipe. That was horrible. What are, how come wipes are only done for Star Wars? We need to bring wipes back to the mainstream. Uh, aren't they like, they, they were used in the uh, Kurosawa films, so. Well, no, I'm saying like modern. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying like, I'm just like, I'm just trying to think of like other instances where like they were used a bunch, you know. Yeah, but I'm saying like, because like this, I much rather have Use them more. Yeah, we haven't seen like the smear, the the smear (laughs) line. Yeah, it's like it's supposed to be going down, so it kind of looks like a movement, but it's not because it's just a smear. Uh Yeah, Wendell and Wild definitely a disappointment. Pretty great music. Mm -hmm. I love the characters of Wendell and Wild; they're fun to watch. Yeah, when they're because they're just it's just Key and Peele. Yeah, but they're not around a lot. Oh no! And I was like, I was like, okay. But yeah, happy Halloween. <laughs> well, before we go. <laughs> before we go. Okay, what? Want to give us uh, some, maybe some more recommendations that people can watch we didn't talk about, or maybe just your favorite Halloween yeah, memories? Sure. Um, well, one movie I do recommend checking, well, checking out if you have the stomach for it, is um, a movie I just, I just kind of, like, kind of got around to liking <sighs> this, at the, this year was Cannibal Holocaust. Mm. It's, it's kind of comes with the realization that all art is political. And that film is as political as it gets. Yep. It is about basically how the th- our desire to become more advanced will ultimately kill us and destroy us. And you know, yep. we're living a Campbell Holocaust. You know, we are we are watching th- these horrible travesties happen, and ha- they happen because of supposedly civilized society. Yeah. So who are we to condemn? Um, another like culture the native, for like yeah. the native culture when we were ju- when we were probably like more savage savage than they are you know less human almost. less human almost. yeah always on our phones and shit yeah I asked that question like because a, a guy wrote a book on it on the movie I was like do you think these movies like this movie like fits in for like a social media age and he's like absolutely yeah of course so it, that's a that's my recommendation for why I didn't talk about um, mm. but it, it's a very hardcore movie. And they kill a turtle. The, yeah, it, the 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 ethics of it are very murky for me, but I like it. I don't like it because of that. I like it in spite of it. Yes, it's a good so I, I like Charlie Brown. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> can we talk about Charlie Brown for a second? Where it's Charlie like, Brown shirt. Charlie Brown is yeah. Charlie Brown is like that. If peanuts are not my favorite like cartoon characters. It's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown is my favorite piece of animation ever. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah, no, it's just like it, it, is, it what, is the that most, is what my soul looks like. Have you, you know? seen the Peanuts movie yet? I've not. I've seen bits and pieces. It's though. really good. Uh-huh. It's actually like I was surprised at how much I'm not hating this because it's Charlie Brown fucking up a lot, and that's yeah. all you need. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Charlie Brown failing, and so that's the whole point, man. Yeah. Can we all agree that if we got rocks in our trick or treat bed, we'd throw it through the window? No, seriously. He who it's like it's like why would you give a kid a rock for Halloween? And why throw it does, through your fucking window? Why is it every single like they they have like a rock on the side for Charlie Brown? Like like engraved is like for Charlie Brown. Yeah. Like, I don't. His dad tried yeah. to flirt with me once. He's like, fuck yeah. you, Charlie Brown. My favorite trick. I got my favorite rock. Halloween memory. Oh man, it's probably just all the pumpkin carving. Oh, pumpkin. Yeah. It is. It is wonderful. I, I think my favorite Halloween memory. I have two because my first year on my Frank the Bunny costume, which you can see on our thumbnail right now. <laughs> but I remember because it was me and Parker going through like the rich neighborhood. You know, they all yeah, like, yeah. good. But like Parker was like running around. I was like, I because the Frank the Bunny costume, I can't see very well, and it's like a, a heated bunny costume. Yeah, I was like, Ugh. I was like passing. I was like, Parker, wait up, wait. <laughs> and, and to be that, that's like the just a funny episode or yeah. like a funny memory. Yeah, but for my favorite. In general, was I think the Halloween of either 2020 or 2021, basically when, when COVID when COVID was still in effect, and basically the idea was that we're in trick or treating. You leave the bowl out away from people, and the kids can just come up and grab yeah, it. Yeah. But it was me on my on my front porch, mm-hmm. carving a pumpkin. I was wearing a creepy mask, just yes. sitting there carving a pumpkin. All the kids would walk by, they gotta look at me a little bit, like what what are you doing? And then they walk up to the candy bowl, and around it, I put all my Godzilla figures as a little oh, nice. like just. Yay, yeah. monsters. Yeah. And just, just that, it was like the perfect Halloween weather. It was cool, but not cold or not yeah. hot. It was like, we're, it was me and my mom just chilling out, listening to, to like Halloween music, mm-hmm. talking. Just, I, I'm working Halloween night. So like, I, I unfortunately won't be like mm-hmm. around the house during trick or treating hours. I wish I could just like, for a little bit, just like sit around and like on the front porch and like give out candy, but I can't Is do that. Is that on a Thursday? It's on a Thursday. Yep. 
I I will be around. However, people don't come to apartments for trick or treating. Oh, okay. yeah, well, yeah, which is sad. Mm-hmm. Come on, kids, come to my apartment. <laughs> I got candy. <laughs> <laughs> on Halloween, it's fine, you know. Yeah, um, because that's a big th- yeah. But Halloween is always. Halloween is a it, part it of our souls. Is is maybe the most magical time of year. It is more than Christmas, in my opinion. I think they're on par. Um, okay, they're they're both equals. Yeah, they're, they're okay, gotcha. Because it's family time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Halloween for me holds places like it. Christmas is about being together as a family, but Halloween is like your kids' first taste of being independent. Okay, they go out trick or treating almost always by themselves. Yeah, they're not. They're they get the point mischief they, night. They get you send them off to be, do their own thing. You know. Yeah. yeah. Obviously not little, little little kids, but like no, not little, 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 like eight year olds. No, but like I, I was saying, like eventually there comes a point where it's like kid goes trick or treat, trick yep. or treating on his own, you know. Oh, I miss trick or treating, man. Yeah, no, those are magical times. But we're but we got, we got a new tra- we got a new tradition. We got a Halloween special. Hey, so yeah, so all of you listening now, for both me and Noah, have a wonderful Halloween. Stay safe, please. Stay safe. Avoid the razor blades, <laughs> but. Watch some good movies. Leave out, leave out candy outside. Play a Halloween movie, and you can hear the kids laughing and giggling outside mm-hmm. as you watch Michael Myers kill someone or something. Mm-hmm. And just chillax. Have a nice chill Halloween out. day. Chill out. Have a nice Halloween day, man. Have some apple cider. Hell yeah. See you Happy around. Halloween. Bye bye.